Yes, I'm serious. Today, March 1st, 2019, I will be setting a world record. I will be doing 100 integrals in one take. I will not be editing this video. I'm using my laptop and also have my cell phone there. Uh, I will be uploading both videos, all right? And as you guys can see, I have the integrals right here. I don't have the answers right here, okay? And I'll be working them out along the way, okay? And of course, you guys can download this file in the description. And I also brought some tools along the way. <laughs> Cliff Bar, and then Starbucks Coffee, and then Gatorade, and then this is a half and half. But the store is called half and half, and this is a Kunquat black tea. So all that. And then I have this special thing right here, which is my medicine medal, my first ever one. And after I finish this right here, which I don't know how long it will take. And then you guys can see I have a clock right here. I really don't know how long this will take. And then after I finish this, I'll put this on. Just like the good old times that I did something that I could not believe I was able to do. And before we start, I just want to say a few things. First of all, I want to give my best wish to Lars because he's battling with his cancers. And you know, I want to thank you for your nice message. And I really wish you the best you can do it. And this video is greatly supported by my girlfriend. I love her so much, my girlfriend Jia. And you know, what the hell? Subscribe to PewDiePie, but in, on a more serious note, uh, subscribe to you know, my friends, Dr. Payam, Wuhan, Mamadika, Max, and all my uh, guest speakers in the past. Thank you. And of course, subscribe to my channel. Okay, so here we go. I really don't know how long this will take. I don't even know if I can do it, but like, I don't even know if my laptop can record that long, so we'll see. Anyway, here's the deal. For all these questions, they will be good for Cal 1 and Cal 2, and I will try to show uh, most of the work, but sometimes if I'm not, I will just, you know, just say we'll do it but in our heads all that. Okay, enough talking. Let's talk about how to integrate tangent to the fifth power times secant to the third power x. All right, so we have a tangent secant situation, and both of them are with odd power, so I think it's a good choice if you can take one of the tangent out and also take out one of the secant. So with that being said, let's do the following. Let's look at this integral as the integral, and as I said, I will take one of the tangents out, so we will get tangent to the fourth power time, uh, of x, and then times secant to the second power of x. And then right here, I will write the tangent x, secant x, and then the dx right here. Well. If I have this on the outside, I hope to write this right here as the expression in terms of secant. And to do so, we know this is fine, but this is not good yet. It's no problem though, because we know tangent to the fourth power is the same as, we can look at this as secant square, we, we can look at this as tangent square and then square. Right, tangent square and then square. And as we all know, tangent square is the same as secant square x minus 1, and then you have that square. So as you can see, we can just take this and distribute it, but you have to do some algebra first. Well, the deal is that if you look at this as that, we can do a little u sub real quick. So with that said, I will just say let u equal secant x, and then we have the du be secant x tangent x dx. And of course, we can take this integral to the u world now, and that's very, very nice. So we'll see this is the integral, and I'll just put this down for the tangent to the fourth power. And namely, we will have u, and we have the square, and then minus 1, and then that square. And then this right here is another u square. And all this, this right here is just my du, so this is very nice. And now we can just do some algebra to simplify this a little bit. As we all know, this right here is going to be u to the fourth power minus 2u squared and then plus 1. And then distribute the u squared, so you end up with integral, parentheses, u to the fourth power times u squared, we get u to the sixth power. And then minus 2u squared times this, which is u to the fourth power, and then plus 1 times that, which is u squared, like that, du. Okay. 
So, of course, now we can just integrate all these guys. So right here, we get 1 over 7, u to the 7th power, and we know u is secant. So let's just write it down. We have secant to the 7th power and the x. And then minus, well, add 1 to the power divided by that, which is 2 over 5. And then we have secant to the 5th power x. And then this right here will give us 1 third. Well, 1 third should be black. And we have the secant to the third power of x, like that. And then we're all done, so we can put a plus c. And I'll only put on a plus c for the final, final answer, which is this one right here. So this is the first one, and we have 99 more to go. And let's see what the next one is, OK? So we'll see. I'm going to erase this now. And there's no way for me to fit in 100 integrals on one board. There's just no way. So I will be erasing this along the way. Right? So the second integral I have for you guys is this. Let me just put this down right here for you guys. We have to integrate cosine of 2x over sine x plus cosine x. And of course, don't forget the dx, even though you know, we'll be doing 99 more integrals, but don't forget the dx. Anyway, let's think about it. How can we do this? Well, cosine of 2x, we have the double angle formula for that. And the best version that we can use is we can write this down as, and let me just indicate, we'll write this down as cosine square x minus sine square x in our situation. Because the denominator is sine x plus cosine x. Well, what good does this do? Yes, we can factor this out, isn't it? So I will, of course, do this in blue. If you factor this out, you will get the difference of two squares, which is going to be cosine x minus sine x times cosine x plus sine x, like that. And with that being done, what we can do next is, see, this and that, they are exactly the same. The water doesn't matter. So of course, you tweak it. But anyway, this and that can be canceled. And we get the integral of this only, which is the baby integral. And of course, we can integrate this real quick. The integral of cosine is positive sine, so you get positive sine x. And the integral of negative sine x is positive cosine. So you just put on plus cosine x, and you are done, put a plus c. And of course, you can do a quick check. If you differentiate this, you will end up with that. So you know this is correct. So we are that very good. And uh, yeah, let's see for the next one, perhaps, hmm, we have this right here, okay? We have this right here. And uh, I think I will try to fit in here, okay? There's a way, I think. Let's take a look at the integral of x squared plus 1 over x to the fourth power minus x squared plus 1 dx. <sighs> the denominator, we cannot factor it. This is not easy, but it can be easy if you are watching this video for, to learn the technique, right? Well, of course, you can pause the video and try this first, but uh, you can just watch the solution. So this is how we are going to do it. On the bottom, this right here, it's not, a, it's not factorable, but it's almost like a perfect square, though, if you have a minus 2x squared instead. And better yet, better yet, we are going to actually divide everybody by x squared. And you will see why. Well, if you don't divide by x squared, you can also you know, do it later on, but like, I'll just divide everybody by x squared. And if you do that, you get 1 plus 1 over x squared over here we get x squared, and you get minus 1, and then you have plus 1 over x squared, like that. We're just dividing everybody by x squared. And again, as I said, this is almost a perfect square if the middle right here was a minus 2x squared, right? So that means I should have a minus 2 right here. And what I will do is I will look at this as x squared, and then for the minus 1, I will look at that as minus 2. Okay, minus 2. And then we will add 1 over x squared. But of course, this is not the same as that anymore. We are going to be adding the 1. So it's like minus 1 and then plus 1. So that's the idea. 
and the beauty now is this right here is factorable and when you factor that I'll just put this down in blue for you guys this right here will give us x minus that which is 1 over x and that's a perfect square and then you have plus 1 and what's this yes you can just take a u sub let u equal to this right here and the derivative of this is precisely the top right here so you can just finish this by u sub so let's do it real quick i will take u to be the inside right here these are the things that you don't see because usually just cut this off you, you, you know but like today you will see everything so anyway we'll take u equal to x minus 1 over x and notice when you differentiate this you get 1 and the derivative of negative 1 over x we do get plus 1 over x squared dx so this integral you know we can take that to the u world right away this is going to be the top which is du let me just put down on the side and then on the bottom we have that which is u squared plus 1 and what's this inverse tangent of u very good so i will just write that down for, for you guys inverse tangent and we can just put a u right here and that's it so i just put down x minus 1 over x and we are done so put plus c i told you we could do this right here right okay so 97 more to go <laughs> yeah and by the way, this is how I feel when I run marathons too, because it's like the, in the beginning that you will feel like excited, and then in the middle you'll start to do like, oh man, can you really do it? And you start to regret, and then by the end you are like, oh, so tiring, but you can see the hope, and you get like you know, happy, the joy, and after you finish, you feel so proud of yourself. Anyway, number four, we have to integrate x plus e to the x squared dx. Right? All right, so to do this, I'm just going to expand it. So I will just say this is going to be, okay, this thing squared, which is x squared, and then we add two times this and that, which is x and e to the x. And lastly, we have to add this square. e to the x squared, we get e to the 2x. You just multiply the powers. So it's this, and you have dx. All right, so this and that are easy, but in the middle, we technically have to do the integration by parts and of course i'll do the di method for you guys so let's see this right here let's do it we get one third x cubed and then for this let me just put it down on the side right here i'm going to do the di method so i will be differentiating 2x and i'll be integrating e to the x plus minus plus this is enough because when you differentiate this one time two times you get zero and then, of course, when you integrate e to the x, it's always e to the x. So that's good. And with that said, don't forget you do this times this, this times that, you get the answer. So the first part of the answer is this times that. So I'll just put down plus 2x e to the x. And then you subtract. Don't forget the sign. So I'll subtract 2 e to the x. Like that. So we are done. And lastly, this right here. When we integrate e to the 2x, and notice that the derivative of 2x is just a 2, so we can do the following. We can just keep the e to the 2x as how it is, but don't forget the chain rule, but you have to do it backwards. The derivative of 2x is 2, so you have to actually divide it by 2, which is the same as multiplied by 1 half right there. And with that, we are done. And I don't think there's anything we can simplify or combine, so we just put plus c. And this right here is it right okay doing good doing good i guess number five integral of cosecant cube x times secant x dx hmm okay this is an interesting one actually let's see well that's the integral I don't think I want to work with cosecant and secant because I don't think they get along with each other that well in integrals. I know sine cosine, they get along with each other much better in integrals, right? So I'll look at this as 1 over sine to a third power, and this is 1 over cosine, right? So I will just put down 1 over this being sine to the third power x, and then this being cosine x dx, like that. So this is good, but I don't think this is 
enough to work with. Because if I want to do use up, then I'm stuck, right? I want to have more things to come up with, and the deal is that I will be utilizing this one. As we all know, we like to look at sine squared plus cosine squared being equal to 1, but today we'll do it backwards. We can look at 1 as sine squared x plus cosine squared x, like that. How's that? And again, the purpose is I want to have more things to work with. And the denominator is just of one term. And the beauty of doing so is I can do the first turn on the top over that on the bottom. So I'll write this down here for you guys. I will get sine square x over this denominator, which is sine cubed x cosine x. And then we add cosine square x over sine cubed x cosine x like that, dx. Okay, this right here is pretty nice because as you can see, we can actually just cancel this and that. So you have one power right here. So that's okay. This right here is actually easier because when you cancel the cosine and cosine, you have sine x in the denominator and the two other power right here, right? You can do use up because you have the cosine x on top to help you out. But the problem is that how can we integrate 1 over sine x times cosine x? Well, don't forget, this right here is technically a 1 now, and we can do this again. So I will write this down right here for you guys. This is the integral. I will write the 1 as, again, sine square x plus cosine square x, and then both of them are over this, and that denom this denominator, right? So I will just divide this by sine x cosine x and now I'll divide this by sine x cosine x like that and uh, let's see I might as well put this down right here together why not cosine x well yeah cosine x over and this was sine to the third power x like this more cancellations happening look this right here is good this and that cancel, you have the first power on the top now, and then this and that cancel, very good. So all in all, we are just doing three little integrals. The first one is the integral of sine x over cosine x, and let's close that, so put on the dx. And then the next one is this being plus integral cosine x on the top over sine x on the bottom, and then the dx. And this right here, integral of cosine x over sine to the third power x dx all right so as you guys know this right here is just tangent and if you integrate tangent you get natural log absolute value of secant so i'll just put that down right here for you guys natural log absolute value of secant x and this right here is technically cotangent and of course you can also do u sub but either way i'll tell you this is just the natural log absolute value of sine x because if you let u equal to sine x, you get that. So everybody right here is pretty much similar. Lastly, do not have the ln addiction. This right here is going to give us 1 over u to the third power because you have that sine to the third power. And we cannot do the natural log. All right, so 1 over u to the third power. In another word, u to the negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2, divided by that, you end up with negative 1 over 2 and you get u to the negative 2 power where u is the sign so I'll just put down the sign in the denominator right here okay sine to the second power x like that and of course you can also write this down as what cosecant so if you would like you can also write this down as cosecant actually let me just write it like this for now sine squared x okay and the truth is you can put this and that together when you have this and that together, of course, you are doing sine times secant. In other words, sine divided by cosine. So the black part will give us natural log absolute value of tangent x. And of course, now I will fix this. This is minus 1 half. I will put this down as the cosecant. Yeah, I guess can still see cosecant squared x. And we are done. So a plus c somewhere that you can see so I'll put a plus c right here Whew, very good right okay so wow i can fit four integrals right here that's pretty cool so now let's see five integrals done took me 20 minutes 
Right, let's see number six right here. Whew, it's, I feel it's kind of getting tired, but it's okay. It's like the sixth mile or so. Anyway, integral of cosine x over, we have sine squared x minus 5 sine x minus 5 sine x minus 6, right? So this is the question right here, minus 5 sine x minus 6 dx, like that, with the cosine x on the top. Well, notice that, again, we have sine cosine in an integral, so that's actually a good news. And I can take a u sub real quick. I can just let u equal to sine x. And with that said, we know du will be just cosine x dx. So thanks to the cosine x on the top, we can do this very nicely, right? So as you can see, this is going to be the integral. This and that is the du, so I'll just put that down on the side right here for you guys. On the top, it will be just 1. This is going to give me u squared minus 5u minus 6. All right, now we have a rational function to deal with. Hmm, of course, do partial fraction, and of course, cover our method. So here's the deal. If you factor this, you get u minus 6 times u plus 1. So that's the factoring for that. And then we are going to do this by the Capra method for the uh, partial fraction. So we know we have the u minus 6 here, and then you add the other one is the u plus 1, du. Okay, here is the deal. To figure this out, you are going to come back to the original, you are going to cover up the same denominator, and you have to ask yourself, how can you make u minus 6 be 0? Well, x, uh, u has to be 6. And you are going to put 6 into this u, and you have 1 over 6 plus 1, which is 1 over 7. So you have 1 over 7 here. And to figure this right here, to figure this out right here, you are going to go back to the original fraction, and you are going to cover up the same denominator. And how can you make u plus 1 to be 0? u has to be negative 1. You put it here, which is going to give us 1 over negative 1 minus 6. In another word, negative 1 over 7, like this. And now we can just integrate these guys. And yes, these are the natural log situations because the buttons are just linear. So for the first one, we have 1 over 7, natural log, absolute value of u minus 6. For the second one, minus 1 over 7, natural log, absolute value of u plus 1, like this. I'm not going to put it on the plus c yet because u is sine x. And also, we can combine the natural logs together. Perhaps I will leave the 1 over 7 on the very front. So I'll write this down. I will factor out the 1 over 7, and I'll just write down one big natural log with the absolute value. This will be on the top, and u is sine x, so I'll put down sine x here, and then minus 6, and then for the other one, it will give us sine x plus 1, like that. And we are going to put a plus c. And here is the answer. Very nice, huh? I cannot go. We have a lot more to go. We have 94 more to go. So next one. OK, slightly easier. Integral of 1 over square root of e to the x dx. Right? Right there. Ah, what can we do? None. Don't worry too much. This is not that bad. This right here, remember. The square root, it's the same as saying the one-half power. You almost always look at square root as the one-half power. So in other words, this right here is just the integral of 1 over e. And when you have the one-half power, you multiply by the x. So you just get x over 2. And don't get upset with this, because when you have this in the denominator, you can just bring this up, which is the integral of e to the negative x over 2 power. And this is actually very nice. because to integrate this, notice that the derivative of this is just negative 1 half. And you know we can just first keep this part right here, e to the negative x over 2. And the reverse Chengdu says we have to divide it by the derivative right here. So we have to multiply by negative 2, just like that. And of course, you can do a quick check. If you differentiate this, you will end up with that. But anyway, 
perhaps already spiked in the original form because negative 2. I can put that down in the numerator and we can put this down in the denominator and we can write that back as the square root. So it's negative 2 over square root of e to the x like that and then with that put plus d like this. Alright? Cool. Now the flavor is slightly different. Number 8, we have a much bigger one. So of course we will have to erase the board now. And let me know if you guys like this clock. And take a guess, how did I put a clock on the whiteboard, right? Let me see. And I feel like I have to conserve energy because as I said, I have about 93 more to go, so I cannot be too excited for this right here. Just that uh, I run marathons, I have to make sure I pace myself well. But anyway, number eight, here we go, number eight, number eight, number eight. We have to integrate e to the x times the square root of e to the x plus, I mean, minus 1 over e to the x plus 3. Oh my god, who came up with this integrals? And yes, that person is me, okay? I handpicked all these integrals right here for you guys. But let's think about how to integrate this. Well, why don't we just do u sub, and especially I have the square root with e to the x minus 1, and let's just make u equal to that and let's see what happens. Because at the moment, you cannot do partial fractions, you cannot do integration. I don't think you want to do integration by parts for this. Let's just do u sub. Maybe the life is better in the u world in, uh, than the x world, right? So let's take a look of the u worlds instead. Let u equal to the square root of e to the x minus 1. And I want to get the dx, and perhaps, let's just divide, let's just go ahead and differentiate. du is going to give us 1 over 2 square root of e to the x minus 1. And of course, don't forget the Chengdu, you multiply by the derivative of this, which is e to the x. And then you have the dx right here. And I will, of course, get the dx by itself by multiplying the reciprocals on both sides. So I get dx being this on the top over e to the x. And let me just keep this as how it is, and we'll see what happens. So here we go. This right here will give us integral e to the x is still e to the x. This guy is the u, so I'll put that down as the u, over I have e to the x plus 3. Hmm, I don't know that too well. But I know dx is this, so I can write that down right now, which is 2. And notice the square root of e to the x minus 1 right here. This is just the uh, u, so I can put down the u right here as well. And we have this over e to the x, and then we have the du right here. So far so good, and you see that the e to the x and e to the x will be cancelled, that's good. But we also have to figure out what's e to the x plus 3 though. Well, we have to look back to this then, because we need to get this expression in terms of u, right? So, let's see if my hair is okay, okay. So, I will see. I will square both sides right here, and then I will add 1 on both sides. So, in another word, u squared plus 1 will give us e to the x, okay? Well, e to the x is just u squared plus 1. So, right here, I have this and then plus 3. So, all in all, we'll end up with u squared plus 4. But let me just write it down right here for you guys. Plus 1 for the e to the x, and then plus three after that, right? So let's try to show as much work as possible, but it depends on the situation. All right, now, as you can see, on the top, this times that is just u squared, but we have a two, so we can take that outside. And then u times u is, of course, u squared, and here we have u squared plus four instead, right? So that's so far what we have, but here's the trouble. How can we integrate this? And you have two choices. One, notice that the degree on the top is 2, and the degree on the bottom is also 2. So you can do long division. But you can also think about, wouldn't it be nice if the top is also u squared plus 4? That would be so nice, isn't it? In the meantime, don't forget to minus 4 to make things happen. So as you can see, this right here is going to be 2 times the integral. This is just going to be 1, and then this right here, let me just close that, okay? And then we have this part, which is we subtract the integral with 
four, let me just put down a four in the front, this four, okay? And then it will be one over u squared plus this four is the same as two squared. We need that because we need to use the R tangent formula, right? So now, this is going to give me x. So let's see, two parentheses, this is x. And then minus the four from here. Inverse tangent formula for this integral, right? And the a value is two. So don't forget you divide it by two. Right? So you multiply by one half right here. And then you have the inverse tangent. And the input is u over two, like this. No, sorry. This right here should be the u. This is really bad, I'm sorry. This right here should be a u, and this right here should be the u. So, when you integrate one in the u world, it should have been a u, okay? Anyway, right here we have u over two, like that. By the way, this is a really common mistake, and I sometimes I make it myself too, so just be really careful with it. So now I will just do the rest for you guys. This right here is just going to be two now. And of course you distribute the two, and the u, you look back, it's this guy, so it's square root of e to the x minus 1. And then we have the 2 times 2, which is 4, so minus 4. Inverse tangent of u is the square root of e to the x minus 1 over 2, like this. And we are done. So we can put plus c. This right here is it. Uh, let me just triple check. Uh, I think this is good. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Yeah, I think this is good. All right, so let's see. So that was number eight. And we are going to continue. Stay strong. Number nine. Here we have the integral of one over x plus the square root of x dx. So, do not have the natural log addiction, seriously. Do not just say this is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus the square root of x. Yes, if you put on plus c, but th no, this is still wrong. Don't do that, okay? Don't just say that you have 1 over, you have x to the first power, no. Because you have the square root of x right here as well. And you might be wondering who put the square root of x, and that person is me, okay? Anyway, this is how we do it. Right here, we can technically factor out the square root of x. So, when we do that, we get the integral of 1 over, I'll factor out the square root of x, because x is the same as square root of x times square root of x, so when I factor this out, I will have square root of x, and this will be just a plus 1 now, and then the dx. This is really good, because we can just take a u to be this. So do a u sub, let u equal to square root of x plus 1, and you know du will be, the derivative of this is 1 over 2 square root of x, dx, and then you can get the dx by itself by multiplying this on both sides, so we have that. And you will see, if you take this integral to the u world, you get the integral 1 over square root of x. Well, don't worry, somebody is going to get cancelled out, so we'll just write it down right here, square root of x. And this guy is the u, so you multiply by u, and dx is this guy, and you see, we have 2 square root of x, like that, and then the du. And, as I told you, we have somebody, you know, being cancelled out now, which is the square root of x right here and right there. And here we have the u part. This right here is actually, right, 1 over u. This is the natural log part. We get natural log absolute value. Well, what's u? u is this. And I will just write that down right here for you guys, which is the square root of x plus 1. This is legit, okay? And notice, 1 is positive, and square root of x is always positive. Technically, I can just write this down as uh, parentheses. I don't need the absolute value. And that's it. And of course, don't forget the 2 right here as well. So let me just put it down right here. So here is the answer. 2 in the front and all that. Right? So you have to do this one legitimately. Okay? Alright, so let's see. Next one. And by the way, for every 10, Integrals will be a will be doing a indefinite will be doing the definite integral. So here is the first definite integral that we are doing. The integral of negative one to the not negative one to the fifth power. 
For negative 1 to the 5, absolute value of x minus 3 dx. Huh. First of all, you can do this by change the absolute value of x minus 3 into a piecewise function and then just deal with that. That's fine. Or you can just do this geometrically. Let me show you. If you graph this, and let me put this down in blue, let's take a look of the graph of the absolute value of x minus 3. Well, you pretty much just shift the absolute value of x three times to the right. So I'll just put down the 3 right here, and then it's going to look like a phi, right? So it's going to look like this. Right? And of course, you are going to have some triangles uh, being involved. So of course, you have to know your area of the triangles. Here's the deal. When x is negative 1, let's put it down here. Put negative 1 here. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Take the absolute value. You get the y value being 4. So as you see, this is 4. And notice, what's this? From negative 1 to 3, this is also 4. Right? So negative 1 to 3, the distance is 4. And then when you have 5, let's say it's right here. Putting 5 in here, 5 minus 3 is 2. So this vertical distance is 2. And what's this right here? It's also 2. Right? So the deal is that, OK, what's the area of this triangle? 1 half base times height. This is 16 divided by 2, which is 8. So this right here is 8. Right? And then 2 times 2 divided by 2, which is just 2. So that's the deal. So this right here is just. 8 plus 2, and you are done. This is 10. Okay. Again, the area of this triangle is just 8. Okay. So that's it. All right, now continue, continue, continue. We can do this, we can do this, we can do this. It's only been 37 minutes. It's OK. I just had to do this 10 more times. 10 times 10 is 100. So we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. Number 10, right here. And have I told you guys, talking is actually harder than uh, running. Right? So, yeah. Anyway, integrating sine x over secant to the 2019th power of x. Well, well, of course, we don't like secant to be on the bottom. We like secant to be on the top. So we'll look at this as, this being on the top will give us cosine. So look at this as, cosine to the 2019th power of x times sine x, like this, dx. And with that being done, this is actually pretty easy. We can take a u sub, let u equal to cosine x, and you see du will be negative sine x dx. So you are going to have some negative signs along the way, all right? So dx is the du over negative sine x. If you want to see the cancellation, this will be it. So you will see this is the integral u to the 2019th power. And let's write down the sine x if you would like. And then dx is du over negative sine x. This is how you can show the cancellation if you would like. Right? So you are going to put a negative on the outside. And then let's integrate u to the 2019. You add 1 to it, which is next year. And then you divide it by next year, which is 1 over 2020. And then u is cosine, so you put that back. So you have cosine to the 20, 20th power, and you have the x right here. That's it. Okay? So you're done. Put plus c. This is it. Oh, I wish all the integrals are this easy. But if it's that easy, then it's not fun, so no. All right, next one. All right? So we have a pretty big one. Let's see if I can fit in here. The, integrate, the integral of uh, x times inverse of sine x over square root of 1 minus x squared dx. <sighs> oh my god. Um, I don't wish... I, I, uh, who put the x there, man? Because if I don't have the x... Because the derivative of inverse sine x is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared, right? I can just do use for that if I don't have the x. Oh my god, whoever put that x? Horrible person, man. But anyway, check this out. In fact, we can integrate this guy by doing a simple u sub. 
I know how to differentiate this guy. So with that being said, this suggests us to do the integration by parts. And I will actually do the integration by parts, right? Yeah, let's just do it right here. Why not? Let's see. Mm. Now I want to keep my uh, usual way to work in my work. So I'll put on D and I. I want to integrate x over square root of 1 minus x squared. And then I want to differentiate inverse sine x. And don't forget the plus minus. Two rows will be enough. When you differentiate this, you get 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. When you integrate this, right, let's do the u sub in your head, OK? Let u equal to this guy. And you end up with, uh, you know what? Let me just tell you guys the answer. Because here's the deal. You should be differentiating square root of 1 plus or minus the x squared a lot already. When you integrate this guy, you do the u sub on your own if you would like. But you end up with the square root of 1 minus x squared. Let's see if this works or not. We have to have some sign, maybe. When you differentiate this, you get 1 over you get 1 over 2, right? You get 1 over 2 square root of 1 minus x squared. But you have to multiply by the chain rule. So you have to multiply by negative 2 x. All right, so I got the x back. They cancel, but I need a negative. So I need a negative right here. So that's how you can do it real quick, right? So if you had a negative, then the derivative of this would be that. Anyway, just do it whichever way that you want. And then you see the nice thing is the first part of the answer is this times that. We have a negative, and perhaps I'll put an inverse sign first, inverse sign of x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then you do this times that. And of course, don't forget, this is technically still an integral. But the beauty of this is that they cancel each other out. That's very nice, isn't it? So again, you have an integral of all this, but they cancel out when you multiply. And you technically have to add the integral of 1 now. And then, of course, you have the dx. So all in all, the answer is just this. Negative inverse sine x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then the integral of that is just plus x. And you are done, plus plus c. This right here is not bad at all. I'll drop the eraser, OK? So let me just triple check the derivative. This is that. It's correct. And now that thing is correct. And everything is correct. This is good. So far, so good, right? Yeah. All right, number. Wait, I have 10 twice. <laughs> All right, that's number 10. This right here should have been 12, uh, 11 and 12. Number 11, number 12. Right? I'm not tired yet. Hopefully not. All right, let's see. Number 13, we have this guy right here. So I will put this down right here for you guys. Number 13, we have the integral of 2 sine x over sine of 2x like this. This right here, it's actually very easy. Why? Because if you use the double angle formula for that, you end up with 2 times sine x, and you also have another cosine x. And as you can see, the 2's cancel, and then the sine x cancel, so you just have 1 over cosine. In another word, you have the integral of secant x. And, you know, perhaps you forgot how to get the integral of secant x from scratch, so I'll show you guys this real quick. To integrate secant x from scratch, you are going to multiply the top and bottom by secant x plus tangent x. Right? So multiply this by secant x plus tangent x. And this is why I haven't put on the dx earlier. <laughs> and then you take a u sub, let u equal to the denominator secant x plus tangent x. When you do that, you get du being the derivative of this, which is secant x tangent x. And the derivative of that is secant square and then x dx. That's exactly what you have on the top. You see secant square and the secant tangent, which is exactly our du. So in another word, this right here is just the integral of 1. And then let's put the du on the side. And then the bottom is our u. So that's how you do it. And by the way, this right here is a standard, it's the standard result. 
when you have the integral of secant x. And there are other ways to get the integral of secant x. You guys can check out my other video for it. Yeah, but I will just write down natural log absolute value of secant x plus tangent x. And of course, if you are just doing the test, you can actually just go from this to here without showing this every single time unless the question wants you to do so. All right, so that was number 13. And now we are going to do number 14, which is going to be right here. Let's see. Whew, number 14, right here maybe. Sure, why not? Number 14, integral of cosine square of or cosine square of 2x. Like that. Right? Okay, the power is 2. We don't like that. We want to have the power be, to be smaller. And to do so, we are going to use the power reduction formula, which is the following, okay? I'm looking at the cosine version, so I'll make a note right here for you guys. We know that cosine squared theta, this right here is equal to 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2 theta, like this. Well, in our case here, you see the theta is actually 2x. So you are going to plug in 2x right here. So in another word, we are integrating 1 half is just a, mul it's just a constant multiple, so we can take that outside. And then we have the 1 right here. And then we add cosine of 2 times 2, which is, of course, 4, and then x, like that. So that's what we do, right? That's what we do. You just use this identity to help us out. So let's see. We have 1 half times integrating x. In, sorry, that's the answer. Integrating 1 in the x for we get x. And then integrating this, do it slightly carefully. The integral of Cosine is positive sine, so the sine right here stays the same, and then the input 4x stays the same, but you are doing this backwards, so you have to divide it by the derivative of 4x, so you are going to multiply by 1 over 4 like this. And we're not done yet because, you know, just be polite, just distribute the 1 half right here, so you get 1 half x. This times that is 1 over 8, and then you have the sine of 4x put plus c like that, right? By the way, thank you so much for designing this t-shirt for me. Thank you, right? So this right here, you will remind me that, you know, I'm staying strong. We can kick calculus in its head, okay? Now, number 15, this is a tough one. I still put it here. I really don't know why, maybe I should change it, but is it's too late now 1 over x cubed plus 1 yes you are seeing this right integrating 1 over x cubed plus 1 yes we have to factor the denominator and we have to do some partial fraction the dirty work right when you factor the denominator you are going to get x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1 so let's see perhaps i'll put the final answer right here so i will do the partial fraction right here in blue for you guys. First of all, I will just be writing this down as 1 over x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. We have two factors. The first one is linear, so I'm going to say this is equal to some constant a over that denominator, which is x plus 1, and then the other one I'll just say plus. This guy is an irreducible quadratic. Therefore, on the top, we have to set our linear. In another word, we have to put down bx plus c. All right, a is easy to figure out because we can do the cover up method. I'm going to go to the original denominator, cover this up, and I will ask myself, what do I need to put in to make this zero? I need to put in x equal negative 1. Put in negative 1, negative 1 here. Check this out. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative, negative 1 is another 1, so I have 2, and then plus 1 is 3. So. Yeah, that's it, one third. A is equal to positive one third. That is very nice. And we also have to figure out the B and then C. Well, the deal is that we can just plug in whatever X values that we want now. But 
Let me just make a note. We used x being negative 1 to figure out a, so we cannot use negative 1 anymore. But we can now use, let's say, x is equal to 0. We're going to do this in your head, okay? When you're putting x equal to 0, this right here, we cannot cover anything up, so you put x equal to 0 for all the x. On the left-hand side, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, 1 over 1 times 1, so you have 1. And on the right-hand side, this is 0, so 1 third divided by 0, so you have 1 third. Well, the beauty of putting 0 is that, you see, b times x, in another word, b times 0, this is gone. So this is gone. So it's 0, 0, so it's 1 on the bottom, so you get plus c. That's what we have. In another word, you see that c is equal to minus the 1 third on both sides. You get positive 2 thirds for that, so that's very nice. Okay? And to figure out b, well, we use 0 and negative 1 already. Let's pick another easy number. Let's say positive 1. Why not, right? So now I will just say use x equal 1. Plugging 1 into all the x, not cover anything up, okay? So you get 1 over. Let's see, do this carefully. 1 plus 1 is 2. Yes, you heard me right. 1 plus 1 is 2. I say that. Anyway, putting 1 in here, 1 squared is 1. Minus 1 is 0, and you have just 1, so you have that. So it's pretty much 1 over 2 on the left-hand side. Still not that bad. Now, putting 1 in here, you have 1 over 3 divided by 2. In another way, you have 1 over 6. Putting 1 in here, so you have b on the top. And then you have plus c is 2 thirds over. And then if you're putting 1 in here, 1 minus 1 is 0, so you have over 1. So in another word, this doesn't matter, so you just have this. And then you can just solve this little equation now. That should remind you of the good old algebra days. You can just solve this and you get everything right. That's the whole question, right? Okay, let's see. What can we do? What to do fractions? Multiply this by 2, multiply this by 2, so you get 4 over 6, right? So altogether, this is 5 over 6 plus b. And on the left hand side, of course, this is. 3 over 6 minus 5 over 6 on both sides. B is equal to negative 2 over 6. In another word, word negative 1 third. So B is negative 1 third, like that. Okay? Anyway, that's the partial fraction part. And I'm going to erase this. And I will be looking at the integral now. So we'll see. We will have to integrate the following. This right here is the same as integrating this and that. So I will just write this down right here for you guys. Integrating 1 third, let's just put that down right here in the front. And then we have the 1 over x plus 1 like this. And then let's close this integral. Why not? And then for the second one, I will just write it as plus. And in fact, I will just keep them as how they are. So perhaps I will write down we have the... Well, both of them have the third. I can factor that out, right? So perhaps I'll factor that out. And I have to do this carefully because I've been doing like 15 integrals already. So we'll see. It's not that bad. Thank God I didn't put this until like a 95th integral. Otherwise, I don't know what will happen. Anyway, integrating. I put a negative one third in the front, okay? I factor out the negative. So the b right here is, this right here is just going to be x. And then this right here is going to be a minus because I factor out negative, so it's going to be a 2. And then the bottom will stay the same, x squared minus x plus 1, like that, right? Oh, I should put this down in blue. Let me just do it real quick. x minus 2 over x squared minus x plus 1. Okay, we are going to look at this slightly more carefully. Notice, I will just put this down for you guys. That was easy, by the way. So look at this. Notice if you differentiate, if you differentiate x squared minus x plus one, you get two x minus one. On the top, I don't have two x minus one. Fortunately, I have x minus two. I'm going to solve manufacture the two x minus one to help us out, and this is how we can do it. I will do this. I should have put this down in black. Let me actually put this down in black. Sorry, yeah. 
Again, x minus 2 over x squared minus x plus 1. This is serious now. I want to have a 2x minus 1 on the top to help me out. This is how. Well, I'm going to multiply the top by 2. Of course, if I do that, change the whole thing. It's OK. I can just divide the 2 in the front like that. So that's still legit. And if you look at this right here, it's going to be 2x minus 4, right? But I want to see a 2x minus 1. So it's OK, though. We can just look at this as 2x minus 1, and then minus 3, like that. And there's the reason why I want to do this. So let's see. I'm not going to integrate this yet. I'm just going to write this down again. And I will do all the integration at the very end. The first one stays the same. And then the next one will have minus. When you multiply, you get 1 over 6. Integral. I'll put parentheses. Here's the deal. I will pair this with this denominator, which is 2x minus 1 over x squared minus x plus 1. And I'll close that. And then I am going to minus. This is still minus inside, OK? So I'm going to minus the integral 3 over. Here's the deal. In order for me to do this, I will have to complete the square for that. So let's see. What's the complete the square for this? I wish to have minus 2, right? So I will have to minus 2 here, I mean minus another x here, and then plus x. What did I say? No, 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 no. I cannot do that. That's the fourth power situation. OK, here's the deal. x squared minus x. To complete the square right here, I look at half of the, yeah, I look at half of the coefficient of x, which is negative 1. And half of that is negative 1 half. You are going to square that, and that's the magic number. So I will look at this as plus 1 over 4, right? But originally, I have 1, so I need plus 3 over 4. And as I said, this and that is still the same. And this, this, that will give us a perfect square. And the perfect square is going to be x minus 1 half square, like that. OK? And perhaps I'll erase this right here now, because I don't need it. And right here, we have plus 3 over 4. And this is what I will do. I will say plus. I need to look at this in the 1 over like x u squared plus a squared. So you can put a 3 in the front. So I'm going to look at the 3 over 4 as square root of 3 squared. But we we'll also have the denominator, so let's put on this over 2. And then we'll have that being squared like that, dx. Whew. Yeah. OK, finally, let's integrate. This right here, easy. 1 third natural log absolute value x plus 1. Done. Right? Done. Write this down better. OK, minus 1 over 6 times this. And the beauty of this is that the derivative of the bottom is exactly on the top. So this right here will give us precisely natural log of the denominator, which is x squared minus x plus 1. And the truth is, if you see the denominator, which you can complete the square right here, you are always going to get positive. So in other words, you can just put on parentheses for this. And I put 1 over 6 times this already, so we are good. Now, negative times negative will give us positive. And then 3 over 6 is 1 half, OK? So this is 3 over 6. That's how we get 1 half, OK? And of course, negative times negative positive. Here is a small trouble part. You are going to end up with the inverse tangent part. So you are going to do the reciprocal of this first. Namely, you multiply it by 2 over square root of 3, and then the inverse tangent. And the input is going to be this as your u. And thank God, the derivative of this is just going to be 1, so that's good. So you put this down, which is x minus 1 half. And then you divide it by this guy, which is the square root of 3 over 2, like this. That's pretty much it. But I will simplify this a little bit for you guys. Right? So we have just 1 over square root of 3 right here. So I will just write this down again. Here we have it. 1 third natural log absolute value of x plus 1. 
minus 1 over 6, natural log parentheses, x squared minus x plus 1. This right here, plus 1 over square root of 3, like this. Okay, so let's just write it down like this, okay? Inverse tangent, and I'll put this as the reciprocal, namely 2 over square root of 3. We're okay with this, and then I'm not going to distribute it. Please don't make me distribute this. <sighs> you can, but nah, let's just do it. So you have this times x, right? So you have this times x, you have the 2 over square root of 3 times x. And then the 2 and that 2 will cancel each other out. So you will have minus 1 over square root of 3, like that. Yes. I think this is correct. <sighs> All right. Well done. Don't forget to put plus c if you... Don't put the plus C, that will suck. So don't forget to do that. Right? Don't forget to do that. Well, that was a long one. And it's been an hour. So I deserve a sip of coffee. This is crazy. Yeah, I don't think. No, that was just a tough one. Anyway, number 16, I'm going to speed up a little bit. Integral of x times sine squared x dx. Well, well, when you see this, we can use the pole reduction formula, and x times that, right? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to look at this as integral of x, and x, I mean sine squared x is the same as 1 half times 1 minus cosine of 2x, like this. So reduce the power. And then, of course, you can just uh, distribute this a little bit. So this is 1 half all the way in the front, and we have the integral, the first one is just x in the x world, and for the second one, we have to minus the integral, and uh, actually, let me put down like this. We're going to plus, okay? I will put a negative inside. And then, of course, next times that, so it's x times this guy, which is cosine of 2x, like this, dx. Okay, so here is the deal. I will do this one in blue for you guys, right? I'll do this one in blue. To do this, we will have to use integration by parts. Of course, we will do the DI setup, right? DI method. Plus, minus, plus on the side to get ready. I will be differentiating negative x, right? If you put a negative x, this is easier setup. And I'll be integrating cosine of 2x, like this. Integrating negative x, you get negative 1. Integrating negative 1, you get 0, so you're done. I mean differentiating. <laughs> uh, okay. Differentiating negative x, you get negative 1, and differentiate this again, you get 0, so you're done. Now, integrating cosine of 2x. First, you end up with positive sine of 2x, but don't forget to divide it by 2. And then, when you do it again, the integral of sine is negative, cosine, and then the input stays the same, but don't forget to divide it by 2 again, so you have 1 over 4. So you pretty much have it. Now let's see, I'm going to just multiply this and that. So we'll see what the answer is. Perhaps we have the 1 half times the this. So I will just write down 1 half. Integral of that is 1 half x squared. Right? Don't forget that. Now for all this, it's just this this time. So I will put this down in blue for you guys. OK, so here we have negative 1 half x times sine of 2x. Yes, and then negative, 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 so it's still a negative, I believe so. Yes, and then 1 over 4 cosine of 2x, like that. Okay, let's double check. It's correct. Okay, so we are done. Uh, distribute the 1 half just to be polite, you know. So you have 1 over 4x squared, this time that is minus 1 over 4x, and then sine of 2x, and then this time that is negative 1 over 8, cosine of 2x, like that, and in the end you put plus c. And here you have it, this is your answer. It's not that bad, it's not that bad, okay? We can do it, we can do it, we can do it. Now, number 17, number 17, number 17. Number 17, what do we have? Okay, this is a nice one. Number 17, 
integral of parentheses and we have x plus 1 over x square dx. Don't do yusa, you don't need to, because you can just expand this, it's nice. So you are just integrating, you are just, it's binomial, so it's expanded, so you get x squared, and then you are going to add 2 times this and that, which is nicely equal to 1, so you just add 1, I mean 2 times 1 like this, and then this square, which is the same as plus x to the negative 2. And did we see this kind of things earlier? Yes, we did, back in question 3. We use this to factor to get that, right? So you expand it this time. So you have this dx, and then we can just integrate this term by term. You get 1 third x cubed and plus 2x. This right here, it wasn't a natural log situation. You have to add 1 to the power, you get negative 1, and then divide it by the new power. So you have minus x to the one x to the negative 1 power. In another word, 1 over x. You know, done. Plus c. Nice and clean. Okay, number 18, this is it for the first page. Whew, number 18, we have the integral of 3 over x squared plus 4x plus 29 dx. Well, here is the deal. Just want to make sure that I close the markers because they are going to be with me for the next, I don't know, four or five hours. <sighs> can we factor the denominator? Say no. Thank you. But can we complete the square? Say yes. Thank you. This right here is the same as saying x squared plus 4x plus 4 and then plus 5, isn't it? I mean not 5, plus 25, which is, you know, 5 squared. So this right here is just x plus 2 squared plus we can look at this as 5 squared, as I mentioned earlier, like that. Very nice. So, in another word, we can do the following. I will put a 3 in the front, and we'll look at this as the integral 1 over, as I said, the x plus 2 squared, and then we add the 5 squared dx. And this is the inverse tangent situation, and we end up with 3 times the 1 over 5, which I can just put it as 3 over 5 here, and then we do the inverse tangent of this being our input. Technically, we should take a u to be x plus 2, but du will be the same as dx, so that's nice. Anyway, we are going to have x plus 2 right here, but don't forget to divide it by 5. Right? The formula says so. This input divided by that number, and you are done, plus plus c. This is number 18. Okay, number 19. Let me number 19 here. Next one. Cotangent to the fifth power. Oh my god. Let's see. Number 19. Let me see if I can fit in here. Integral of cotangent to the fifth power x dx. Some of you guys might want to try this to use the cotangent and cosecant. That's okay. But you will have to know how to deal with the integral of cotangent to the third power. You have to do more work for that. It's not ideal. So what we'll do is, we know cotangent is the same as cosine over sine. So I will look at this as cosine to the fifth power x over sine to the fifth power x. This is very nice. Well, our numbers, especially the top one. I will just take one out to save me for the u sub u c. Let's look at this as the integral of, I want to put down cosine x on the side. On the bottom here, we still have sine to the fifth power x. This is going to give us cosine to the fourth power. In another word, cosine square and square. And cosine square is the same as 1 minus sine square x. And then you square that. So they are still equivalent. And the beauty of doing so is, we can take a u sub, let u equal sine x, and du will be precisely cosine x dx. So I can take this to the u world right away. This is the integral of 1 minus u square, and then square over u to the fifth power, 
and this part is just du. All right. So that's the deal. I forgot to set my laptop to never go to sleep. So let me do that right now. Uh, let me just say, don't go to sleep. Okay, don't go to sleep. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to go to sleep neither. Now, let's do this in your head. Integral. All right. One squared divided by u to the five. So you have u to the negative five. Next, you have minus two. Um, u square divided by u to the five, so you have u to the negative three, right? So far, so good. Lastly, you have plus u to the fourth power over u to the five, which is just one over u. I want to write this down because you guys like the ln, right? So I'm going to write this down right here. And then we have the du right here. Here's the deal you add one, which is negative four, and you divide it by that. So here is the first answer. We get 1 over negative 4, so perhaps I'll put a negative in the front, like this. And u to the negative 4, we can put a u in the denominator. But notice, u is sine x. When you have that in the denominator, it becomes cosecant. So u to the negative 4 becomes cosecant to the fourth power of x u to the negative power is cosecant, right? So, yeah. Next, right here, we are going to add 1 to the power, which is negative 2, divided by negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is plus 1. And then again, u to the negative 2 is the same as saying uh, cosecant in our case. So we have cosecant square x. And lastly, we add natural log, absolute value. u is sine x, so this time you have to put the sine x back. Yeah, unless if you want to have everything in cosecant, you can put this as a negative and you can put a cosecant. That will be up to you. So I will leave that to you guys. I think this right here is good enough. Done. All right. Number 20. Number 20. Believe it or not, I will fit number 20 right here. Why not? All right. Number 20. I'm looking at the integral from negative 1 to 1. Tangent x over x to the fourth power minus x squared plus 1 dx. I will tell you, this right here is very easy. The answer is just 0, and then we are done. Why? Because tangent is an odd function, and you have an even function on the bottom. Why? Because you have even powers, and seriously, you can do the usual check if you like. But all in all, you have an odd and also continuous function on this interval from negative 1 to 1. So Whenever you are integrating negative, let's say, a to positive a of an R function, dx, ODD dx, <laughs> ODD dx, no, oh, no, no, man. ODD, let's just put ODD dx. This right here will give you zero. Okay? So, that's it. Yeah, so that was nice. Now, moving on to question number 21. So, so far, it one hour and oh my god, it's going to be like five, six hours. I don't know if I have this much. I don't know if I have much memory to record everything on my laptop. Uh, but hopefully, at least I have a backup. I don't know, man. Seriously. <sighs> Let's see. Number twenty-one. I don't need to hold this paper. Number twenty-one, right here. I have the integral, and we have sine to the third power x times cosine squared x dx, right? Well, well, hmm. Play around with the exponent. This right here, perhaps I can just take one, uh, take one of the signs out, so I can look at the uh, uh, substitution in terms of like that u equal to cosine. So here we go. This is integral, and let me just look at this as sine squared, but I will put that down like this. I will put a sign right here. And we'll get sine squared x times sine x. This right here is here already. And sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So that's nice. And then we multiply by another cosine squared x, like that, and times sine x, and then the dx. Very nice. And with that said, I'm going to just take a u sub, that u equal to 
cosine x. So if I do that, let u equal to cosine x, du will be negative sine x, dx. And I'm going to do this now, okay? You know you are going to get this and that being canceled. I will put a negative on the, on the outside like this already. And then you have the integral, and then you have 1 minus u squared, and then times u squared, like this. This with this negative sign, all together we have that du, so this is nice. And then, of course, you can continue this real quick. This is going to be negative parentheses. Well, actually, let me... Yes, I have two erasers, by the way. Integral, distribute, you get u squared minus u to the fourth power, du. And now, negative parentheses, one third, u to the third power, u is cosine, so we have cosine to the third power x. Actually, let me just distribute, distribute negative, so we'll put a negative right here. Negative times negative will give us plus, and then the integral of that is 1 over 5, cosine of fifth power x. We are done like that. This is a quick and easy one. Yeah. <sighs> like this. Okay, now, oh my god, number 22. Let's see what's up with this. Number 22. Integral of 1 over x squared, square root of x squared plus 1 dx. Tricks up, maybe? Anyone? No, I can do, do use up right here. Let me show you how. Let me show you how to do it. Look at the inside here, right? Notice that the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x to the first power. Right? We don't have 2x to the first power. But if you factor out x squared, you end up with x to a negative 2 somewhere. If you set that to be the u, you end up with you know, x to a negative 3 power, something like that. It's very nice. Let me show you. So here's the deal. I'm actually going to factor something out first, right here. This is the same as saying I can factor out x squared, and I'm left with 1 plus x to the negative 2. How's that? Don't forget, we still have the square root in the denominator, like this, right, for that. And of course, you still have the x squared on the outside. Well, well, when you have the square root of this times that, of course, uh, we're just focusing on the integrations in this video. So I'm just going to do this. And now, here's the beauty, okay? You are going to get the following. This is going to be the integral. This is x squared, and this is x to the first power. Don't worry about the absolute value. All to get is x to the third power. If you bring that to the numerator, you get x to the negative 3. So that's what I would like to show you. Let me just put this down right here, x to the negative 3, like this and that. And then for the bottom, you still have the square root of 1 plus x to the negative 2 dx. And when we do this, we can just take a u to be 1 plus x to the negative 2. Let me see if I can do another one. Maybe now just do use of it. So real quick, 1 plus x to the negative 2. Differentiate both sides, we get du being negative 2 x to the negative 3 dx. Aha! That is going to help us out. So perhaps I'll just I saw this real quick. dx is the same as du over negative 2 x to the negative 3. So you are going to see. We have, here you have the integral, x to the negative 3 over square root of u, and the dx is that, which is du over negative 2 x to the negative 3, and this and that cancel each other nicely, so wonderful, isn't it? Yes, it is, of course. Here, we have negative 1 over 2, right, in the front, and we are integrating. This right here is the same as u to the negative 1 half power, and we are having the du right here. Okay, so I'm going to add 1 to the power, and which is going to give us positive 1 half. Divided by positive 1 half is the same as multiplied by 2 over 1. They cancel each other out. Very nice. So we are going to end up negative, negative, and then u to the 1 half power, named the square root of u. Well, I will just put on square root. U is this guy. So I just put on 1 plus 
x to the negative 2. And with that, we are done. How wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Let's see. I see. It's good. Yeah. OK, so that was number 22. And now, moving on to question number 23. I will just come here and erase. Question number 23. Oh my god, I'm like almost a quarter way done. Integrating sine x times secant x times tangent x dx. This is not that bad though, because notice this right here is just the same as 1 over cosine x, right? This is the same as 1 over cosine x. And then this times that is tangent, and times another tangent, yes, you just get the integral of tangent square x dx. And for you, integrate tangent square. It's the same as integrating secant square x minus 1. Very nice. I have a really short video, only 20 seconds long, on the integral of secant square. People didn't like it because I just told them the, inter the answer to that integral is just tangent x. But that's it. You have to know your derivative table really well. And then, uh, minus x, and you're done, Go plus c. Very nice. OK, number 24, we have secant to the third power x. That takes some space, and I will do this from scratch, but I will do it pretty quickly, though, for you guys. So I will just show you guys how to do this right here, 24, integral of secant to the third power x dx. All right, this is a famous one, so you have to know how to do this. We will be using integration by parts. We have to break this apart into secant to the first power times secant to the second power. And when you do that, perhaps I will just write this down right here for you guys. Right? I will put this down, right? D and then I plus minus. OK. so. I will be integrating secant square x because we know how to do that. We just did that over there, and I will be differentiating secant x. Right? And when you differentiate this, you get secant x tangent x. And when you integrate this, you get tangent x. Very nice. So in another word, when you multiply this and that, you get the first part of your answer, which is secant x times tangent x. But don't forget, you still have to multiply this row, which is still going to be an integral. Minus the integral, and you have the secant x, and you have tangent tangent, which is, of course, tangent square x. I'm sorry, clock. Yeah. Well, hopefully I don't knock you down, because it took me a while to put you up. So that's pretty much the idea. Well. You apply the integration by parts, and this is going to be a repeated situation. Because if you look at tangent square, well, we know that secant square minus 1. We did that over there already, right? So let me just write this down. This is the same as secant square x minus 1. And you can distribute, distribute. I will write this down again for you guys. Integral of secant cube x dx is equal to, this is the first part of the answer, secant x tangent x. But you have to minus two integrals. I will split this down. The first integral is the integral secant times secant squared, which is another secant cube x. And I'll close this integral. And then the next one is minus minus becomes plus, And then we have the integral secant x times 1 is secant x dx, like this. All right, here we will do two things at the same time. First, I will add this on both sides because I see the repeat. So add this, so they cancel, just like the good old algebra days, isn't it? All right, and in the meantime, we can also figure this out. But I will just put on the answer right here for you guys in blue. So when you do that, on the left-hand side, you get 2 times the integral of secant cubed x dx. And this is equal to that, which is secant x tangent x. But you are going to add, this is an addition, right? Addition, okay, not addiction. You add the integral of this, which is natural log absolute value of secant x plus tangent x, like this. 
in the end, divide everybody by 2, so multiply everybody by 1 half. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you guys that the integral secant cube x dx is 1 half times secant x tangent x plus 1 half natural log absolute value of secant x plus tangent x. And we are done. So, put plus c. This right here is it. Right? So, it wasn't that bad. If you practice a few times, you can do it too, seriously. I don't know how many times I've done these integrals with my students already, so yeah. All right, so let me just show you guys the work. Okay, number 25. I feel sore over the legs already. Number 25, the integral of 1 over x times the square root of 9x squared minus 1 dx. And here's the deal. Unfortunately, we cannot just factor out the uh, x squared whatsoever and then do the u sub. I don't think that's the case, unfortunately. However, though, we can do some tricks up now. This is how we are going to do it. First of all, you may be noticed that that 9 is bothering us. So I will be doing this, right? I will write this down as the integral of... Actually, I will just save my some, some time. When you have 9 in front of the x squared, you are going to be looking at this as parentheses with 3x inside and then square, like that. And then technically you do u sub and all that stuff. But here is the beauty. When you have the integral 1 over x times the square root of some number times x squared minus 1, I will tell you guys the answer to this right here. It's actually just a inverse secant of that input, which is 3x. And technically, you are, oops, not plus 1. Technically, it's not wrong, not, 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 not wrong to put plus 1, but this is it. Whenever you have the integral in this form, you have the inverse secant. Seriously, that's it. But I will still show you guys the, in, I will still show you guys the trick sub right here for you guys real quick. Okay, so first of all, notice that you have something squared minus 1, and the goal is you want to use the secant to help you out. So I'll put this down right here for you guys. I will say, put this right here, 3x to be secant theta. All right? And of course, I want to get the dx, so I will divide both sides by 3, so x is 1 third secant x, I mean secant theta. And I will differentiate both sides, so dx is equal to 1 third. This right here will give me secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. And I'll take this to the theta world. You will see this is going to be the integral. For this x, well, it's 1 third secant theta. So I'll put that down right here, 1 third secant theta. And as I said, if you put this right here, the secant theta for 3x, and then you square that, you get tangent square inside, because you have the minus 1 after that. Secant square theta minus 1 is tangent square, and in the square root, you just get regular tangent, tangent to the first power, like that, right? On the top, of course, you still have 1, and over here, you have the dx being this, which is the same thing, 1 third secant theta tangent theta d theta. And yes, you got it. We can cancel these guys out. Very nice, very nice, very nice. So, we are just looking at the integral of 1 in the theta world, which is just going to be theta. And because, oops, this is good to, well actually, no, I'm right. <laughs> Alright, theta. So you see, we have secant theta being 3x. Take the inverse on both sides, and I do a theta is equal to the inverse secant of 3x. So you are done right there. So up to you, and depends on your situation. Maybe you have to show the work, maybe not, but you, know, you can actually go from here to there right away. All right, next one. Cosine of square root of x. All right, 
let's see how to deal with this. 26 integral cosine square root of x dx. It seems that I don't know what to do in the x world, so I'll take this to the u world real quick. I'll take u to be square root of x, and I will square both sides, and I get x is equal to u square, and then dx is equal to 2u du. So as you can see, this is going to be the integral of cosine, and then the input is u, and then we multiply by 2u du. And I will do the following. We can do integration by parts right here. That's very nice. So I'll put this down in blue. So d and then i, I will be differentiating to u. Okay, I'll take the 2 with me as well. And then I will be integrating cosine u plus minus plus. Differentiate this, differentiate that. That's it. Integrating cosine u, you get positive sine u. And then integrating sine u, you get negative cosine u. So you have this and that being our answers. So let's see, we have 2u sine u, and then negative times negative is plus 2 cosine u, right? And of course, in the end, we put the u back, which is 2 times the square root of x, and then we have the sine of the square root of x for the u, and then right here, we add 2 cosine of square root of x, like this. So we are done. I will erase my di method right here. And we just put on plus c, like this. It wasn't too bad, isn't it? <sighs> OK, good. Cosecant. OK, cosecant. Cosecant x. Integral of cosecant x dx. Cosecant should remind you of secant. And yes, the way to integrate them are very similar. But I will show you guys a standard result. I will look at cosecant x, and I will multiply the top and bottom by cosecant x minus. Technically, if you want to do plus, it's OK as well. I have a video on that if you guys want to see. Cosecant and tangent, I mean cosecant and cotangent are best friends in integrals. So you subtract them in this case. And then you have the minus cotangent x. Right? And you have the dx, of course. Check this out. Here you get cosecant square and then negative cosecant cotangent. If you differentiate this right here, you end up with negative. Let me just write down this for you guys. If you take u to be the denominator, du will be the derivative of this is negative cosecant x cotangent x. And you are going to get that on the top, you see? Negative this times that. So this is going to be for that. And you are going to differentiate this, negative times the derivative of that, which is going to be positive, cosecant square x, right? dx. So the point is that this is the same as the top after you distribute it. And then you take u to be this. So in the, um, in the end, you have to integrate 1 over u, which is going to be natural log of u, which is the absolute value, and then the u is the denominator, which is the cosecant x minus cotangent x. And then you are done, put a plus c. And it depends if you're in a hurry or now, or maybe if you don't need to show work, then you can actually just go from here to here. This is the standard result that you guys can just quote and be happy with it. I think that's the deal for many situations. OK, so 27 already. We have 73 more to go, right? Let's see. Let me see how the, yeah. My, my iPhone is still uh, recording. That's good. Good news. OK, 27. And now we have 28. Let me put it down right here for you guys. 28, we have to integrate square root of x squared plus 4x plus 13 dx. <sighs> Not yet. All right? Don't do tricks up yet. In fact, we have to complete the square because we have three terms inside. So let's go ahead and complete that. Well, look at this right here. You know you have to have x squared plus 4x plus 4. So you can look at this as x squared plus 4x plus 4. And then to get 
9, uh, to get 13, of course, you have to put a plus 9. So in another word, we can look at this as the integral of the square root. This, this, and that will give us parentheses with x plus 2 inside, and then square that, and then the 9 will be plus 3 squared. This is pretty nice. So put plus 3 squared like that. OK? And then, of course, we have the dx next to it. Now we do tricks up. Well, here is the small trouble. Yes, you take this as the u, so I will actually just uh, skip that part, okay? But notice we don't just add plus 1 squared, we are adding plus 3 squared. So you want to get this to be, well, tangent, because tangent squared plus 1 will give us secant squared, but uh, you want to match with the 3, so the one that you have to do is you have to take this right here, namely x plus 2. You have to set this to be with the 3 in front when you multiply this and then the tangent theta. Okay? Again, take this. If you want to do u sub, it's up to you. But you can just put it right here real quick. And then you have 3 tangent because, again, you have this right here. And I will differentiate both sides because this right here will give me dx right away anyway. And the derivative of this is 3 secant squared theta d theta. Now we go to the theta world. So we will have the following, the integral of square root. This right here is the 3 tangent theta, right? So I'll put this down. I think we'll just do it in all in blue for you guys. 3 tangent theta. And then you are going to square that. And then you are going to put on plus 3 squared from earlier times dx is all that, so multiply by 3 secant square theta d theta, like this. Okay, here is the deal. Let's do this in your head. You get 9, you get 9. Factor out of 9, take the square of 9, you get 3, okay? You have a 3 right here, so this is going to give me, give me 3 times. And then you have the square root. Tangent square plus 1, as I said, you will get uh, secant square theta. And when you cancel out the square with the, with the square root, you get secant to the first power. Anyway, all in all, 3 times 3 is 9. Put that all the way in the front. And then integral. And then this times that is secant to the third power. So you put down secant to the third power theta, d theta. Oh my god! I'm dealing with a secant to the third power in this data world, but the good thing is that we can do this, okay? We can do this, okay? We can totally do this because we did that earlier. So, I'll put down the answer for you guys. Alright? So, here's the deal. 9, and I'll write down the answer right here, which is 1 half times secant theta, tangent theta, and then you add 1 half. Natural log, absolute value, secant theta plus tangent theta in the absolute value, like this. In the end, we have to go back to the x world. This right here is slightly trickier, so let's see. Secant theta, I don't know. I know tangent theta is this, so check this out. So let me put this down right here for you guys. So put this down in red. We know tangent theta, we can divide both sides by 3. So in other words, we get x plus 2 over 3, right? And from here, we can draw a right triangle, and I'll put this down in blue for you guys now. Why not? Let me put on a triangle here. Actually, let me just write this down a little bit above so I can have more space. Tangent theta equals x plus 2 over 3, and now draw a right triangle right here. Tangent is what? Yes, opposite over adjacent, so you have the angle here, this will be x plus 2, this right here will be 3. That's very nice. And we also have to figure out the hypotenuse. Of course, this right here will be the square root of parentheses x plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. And guess what? This right here is exactly our original. So this right here is just the square root of x squared plus 4 squared plus 13. Right? Now, let's do the usual business. I'll do this in black and blue. First, 9 times 1 half. Do the easy one, of course. 9 over 2. 
secant theta is hypotenuse over adjacent, so you have this over that. So in another way, you get square root of x squared plus 4x plus 13 over 3, right? But I just wrote it down in the wrong color. I told you I was doing blue. So let's see, like this, over 3. Tangent theta is what? x squared, I mean not x squared, x plus 2 over 3, all right? And then it's going to be the same for the rest, plus, don't forget to distribute, otherwise it will suck. <laughs> 9 over 2, and you have the natural log, absolute value. Secant is this again, which is the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 13 over 3, and then lastly we have plus x plus 2 over 3, right? Not done yet. 3 times 3 is 9, can be cancelled with that 9, right? So that's good. And here is the deal. Right here, as you can see, I can put this down together into this plus that or over 3 instead of the natural log. When you have a quotient instead of the natural log, you can write this down as 9 over 2 natural log of the top minus 9 over 2 natural log of the bottom. But the bottom is 3, so you have 9 over 2 natural log of 3, which is just a constant. So right here, if you would like, you can say this is plus C1. I would put on this right here, plus C1. And this is what will end up, this is how I will finish the answer for you guys. First, 1 half x plus 2 in a parentheses, and then square root of x squared plus 4x plus 13. And then plus, I will just write down 9 over 2 natural log. And here's the deal. In fact, I did not need a absolute value. Why is that? This right here, it's always bigger than x plus 2, I believe. Why? Because you have the hypotenuse. It's no good than x plus 2 for sure. So I did not need the absolute value, right? You can put on parentheses. I'll put on parentheses. I will just write on the top. I'll put this down right here. So you have the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 13. And then plus parentheses x plus 2 if you would like. Parentheses. And then minus a constant and then plus c1. I will just label that to be plus c2. Okay? So this will be the clean answer, okay? But if you keep it as this, nobody is going to get mad at you. If you just write that down on the test, I think your professor, your teachers shall give you full credit as well. But I think this is, this is good. Okay, oh my god. One hour and 40. I don't know, I'm not going to look at the time. Okay, 29. I don't know how many guests are still watching. If you're watching this one, uh, give me a timestamp right now and I just you know, thank you guys so much. E to the 2x times cosine x. Okay, 29. No time to waste, come on. Integral e to the 2x times cosine x dx. Another famous one, so I'll show you guys. You know, to do this, we have to use the integration by parts. So I will just go ahead and put this down right here. D and then the I. I put on plus, minus, plus. I will just go ahead and differentiate e to the 2x. In fact, it doesn't matter which one you differentiate or which one you integrate. It doesn't matter. In the end, it will be the same thing. Well, differentiating this, you get 2 e to the 2x, and do it again, you get 4 e to the 2x. Technically, you have to do a few maybe, but you should also be integrating. When you integrate cosine x, you get sine x. When you integrate sine x, you get negative cosine x. And here's the deal. Look at the function part. This and that, the function part repeats. So you stop, right? First of all, you do this times that, this times that, you get the first two parts of the answers, of the answer, and then this is still an integral. This is the repeated situation. So let me write this down right here for you guys. So what we're saying is the integral of e to the 2x times cosine of x dx is equal to the first part of the answer is this times that, which is e to the 2x times sine x. 
and then this time step, which is plus 2 e to the 2x times cosine x. Again, negative times negative. Lastly, though, you are going to you are going to multiply this row, and this is still an integral. And don't forget, this is going to be a minus situation. You have minus, and you can put a four in the front, and then you have the integral e to the two x, and you have the cosine x dx, right? Well, it doesn't really matter because I will be adding this on both sides. So I will just say we add for integral e to the 2x cosine x dx. So this and that will be canceled. It. I will bring this right here. We add for integral e to the 2x cosine x dx. So let's do a few things in our head, okay? That's gone. 1 plus 4 is 5. I will divide everybody by 5. So when you end this up, you will end up with integral of e to the 2x cosine x dx. And then give this a 1 over 5. So 1 over 5, e to the 2x sine x. And also multiply this guy by 1 over 5, which you will get plus 2 over 5, e to the 2x cosine x. You are done, put a plus c, all right? So that's it. Now, Continue to number 30. All right. It's a definite integral, so hopefully it's good. If not, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Let's see, let's see. If you wonder who came up with all these questions, yes, the person was me. <sighs> all right, number 30. Let me put this down right here. Number 30. Uh, definite integral from. 3 to 5, parentheses x minus 3 to the ninth power, it's nice as well, right? dx. Okay, here is a small thing I want to show you guys. Um, here's the, the power of the u sub, okay? Because You can actually just multiply this out, and you have to expand that, x plus 3 to a nice power, and then you can integrate that plug in numbers up to you, or you can just do u sub. When you let u equal to the inside, this is very nice. du is the same as dx. And you can take this to the u world and finish that. This right here, don't forget, is x equals zero, uh, to 3 up to 5. Right? These are the x values. These are the x values x going from 3 up to 5. Well, you are going to take this integral to the u world. You put in 3 in here, 3 minus 3 is 0. That means you have u begins at 0. And then you put 5 in here, you get u will be finished at 2. Very nice. And then you just have u to the ninth power, and then du is the same as dx, so you can just uh, du that. <laughs> and then integrate this guy. Finish everything in the u world. Add 1 divided by the new power, which is 1 over 10. And then you have u to the 10th power. And then you are going to be plugging numbers, right? And again, these are the u numbers. So the first thing that you have to going to do is plugging 2. So you have 1 over 10 times 2 to the 10th power minus plugging 0. 1 over 10 times 0 to the 10th power. This right here is just 0, so it doesn't matter. And 2 to the 10th power shall be a famous number, 1024, especially if you study computer science, right? So this right here is 1024 divided by 10. And now, of course, you know, take a pride, you reduce the fraction, you know, 512 over 5. And seriously, if you use decimal, sure, Fine, whatever. 102.4. Up to you. <laughs> All right, number 34. Number, what number is it? Number 31. I'm going to erase this right here now. <sighs> number 31. Number 31, we have the integral 
of 1 over square root of x. Ooh, we have the x inside of the square root. And then minus x to the 3 over 2 power. Huh, weird. Uh, I don't think I want to do use up. No, I mean, I don't think I want to do tricks up. <laughs> Let's see. This is like saying what? x to the first power, namely 2 over 2. We can factor something out, right? So, when you do that inside wise, you can see you can factor out the x and you get 1 minus. Okay, you factor out 2 over 2 pretty much, so you get x to the 1 over 2, like that, right? So, in another word, you will see. Don't forget, this is still inside of that square root. So you can square root that, square root that. So you get the integral of 1 over square root this in the front. And then you have square root of 1. And then x to the 1 half power is another square root. Oh my god, this is way too fun. And you guys know, we can now do a u sub. Let u equal to this right here. I think it will work out pretty nicely, so let's do it. Let u equal to 1 minus square root of x. And uh, let's go ahead and finish this. du will be, the derivative of this is negative 1 over 2 square root of x, dx. And then, of course, dx is the same as, multiply this on both sides, you get negative 2 square root of x over 1, du. And of course, take this integral to the u world, you get the integral of 1 over, keep this for now, it's going to get killed pretty soon though, and you get the square root of u, and then dx is this guy, so you multiply by negative 2 square root of x, du. Ha! Look at this and that, cancel, very good. And now, you're looking at this as negative 2 integral, 1 over square root of u, it's the same as saying u to the negative 1 half power, the u world, so you add 1 to the power, which is 2 over 1, and, well, that's, I'm one step ahead of myself. Negative 1 half plus 1 is 1 over 2, divided by the new power, which is multiplied by 2 over 1. Cancel, cancel, you still have the negative though. So, negative u to the 1 half power, which is the square root of u, and u is that. So, I will just put that down right here, 1 minus square root of x, and we are done for plus c. Very nice, very nice. Okay, next one. Oh man, very similar, very similar. Oh, we'll, we'll see if this is going to work or not. So don't be surprised, right? Number 32 here. We have the integral of 1 over square root of x minus x squared dx. <sighs> let's, let's factor it just like that. This time we're doing it in our head. This is the same as the integral of 1 over factor out an x in the square root. In another word, you can take out the square root of x. And then you have square root of 1 minus x. Like that, right? You can just look at x times this, times that you get this. By the way, if you notice why my hands are getting like dirtier and dirtier, it's because of the marker. I have some new ones. This is how the new ones look like. And the <laughs> locals are going to be on my hand. Yeah, unfortunately. Yes, this marker sucks. But I love my markers, so I need them. I need them, okay? Oh my god, let's see. Here is the deal though. Earlier, when I have the square root, I can somehow cancel the square root outside. I have this square root on, all the, on the outside. I don't have the square root inside to help me out. But can I somehow squeeze out a square root? Yes, we can. Because this x is the same as saying square root of x squared. How's that? Sure. So we can look at this as the integral of 1 over square root of x times the square root of 1 minus square root of x squared, like that. Very nice. And then from here, I will do a u sub. I will let u equal just the square root of x, though. Just the square root of x du will be 1 over 2 square root of x dx, and of course dx will be 2 square root of x du. Well, here is the deal. You see that we have the integral of 1 over square root of x, and then this is the square root of 1 minus u squared, 
and then dx is this guy, so you multiply by 2 square root of x du, and you can cancel this out. Very nice. And now, do we recognize how to integrate 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared? If you would like, you can do a tricks up. You let u equal to sine theta, and you do that, blah, 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 and you end up with inverse sine at the end, right? So here's the deal. Right here, I will just put on a 2 right here for you guys, and then we will get the inverse sine of u when you go from here to here. u is square root of x. So of course, finally, we'll put it back, and we get 2 times sine inverse, with the inverse sine of, of the u, which is the square root of x, like that, plus, plus c. We are done, OK? Now, moving on to, oh my god, finally something easier. The next one. All right, next one, next one, next one, which is 33. All right. Question number 33. Integral of e to the 2 times ln x dx. Huh, weird. Can I cancel them out? Not now. First, you have to put the 2 to the power and you get this as the integral of e to the ln. This right here has to be clean. And then you have x squared like this, dx. And then you can cancel them out. That's fine. All in all, we're just integrating x squared. So we have this being 1 third x cubed. And we are done. And I think this is pretty much everybody's first integration, isn't it? Like integral of x squared. And you get this. All right. Next one, number 34. I actually put this one on my test for my Cal2 student recently. Natural log of x over square root of x dx. Here's the deal. Whenever you have the integral of x to some power times natural log of x, you can do this by integration by parts. So we will, again, do it by integration by parts. Of course, we'll do this by the di setup. First. The, I will choose natural log of x to be differentiated because if you want to integrate natural log, you have to use integration by parts again, right? I will be integrating 1 over square root of x. So you see, we have the square root of x in the denominator. In another word, x to the negative 1 half power. All right, enough talking. This right here is 1 over x. Integrating this guy, I will add 1, which is going to be 2, I mean 1 over 2, and then divided by that, which is multiplied by 2 over 1. So I get 2x to the 1 over 2 power, which is square root of x, like this. So the first part of the answer is this times that. So I put this times that, which is 2 square root of x times natural log of x. And right here, do not put down absolute value around the natural log. Why? Because originally, you have natural log of x right here. You only, put on you only put on absolute value of x around the you only put on absolute value around the natural inside of the natural log when you do the integral 1 over x and you get natural log absolute value of absolute value of x you know what I'm talking about <sighs> anyway here's the deal multiply this right here and you still have to write that as an integral so you, you have the 2, and that's a minus, integral. OK, 1 over x times square root of x. In another word, square root of x over x, you still end up with square root of x. All right, square root of x right here, dx. So here is the final answer. I'll just write this down right here for you guys. Answer is 2 square root of x times natural log of x. This right here, we did it earlier. When we went from, sorry, my bad. All right, here is, let me do it again. I have negative 2 integral, this times that. Square root of x over x, we have 1 over square root of x. OK, we have 1 over square root of x. And here's the deal. 
We did this one earlier already. It was the red part, x to the negative 1 over 2. And then we end up with 2 square root of x. So this right here is 2 square root of x. Okay? So what we are going to do is 2 times 2, which is 4. And we are going to subtract 2 times 2, which is 4. And we have the square root of x. With that, we are done. This right here is it. Okay? So that was positive, so keep it positive. All that stuff. Very nice. Okay, 35. Okay, 35. 35, 35, 35. Integral of 1 over e to the x plus e to the negative x. Right? Hmm, oh my god, we have negative exponents. Usually we don't like to have negative exponents, so what can we do? Well, we can just multiply the top and bottom by e to the x, e to the x. And with that said, you have the integral of e to the x on the top over this times that will give me just 1. It's a nice 1. This times that will give me e to the x and then square. Let me look at it like this. e to the x and then we square that dx. And why? Because I will take a u sub, let u equal to this, e to the x. And then du will be e to the x dx. Aha! We have that on the top. So, you pretty much will have 1 over u squared plus 1 in the u world, and when you integrate that, it's an inverse tangent situation, and all in all, you end up with the inverse tangent of u, which is e to the x. And you can write this down, you can do the u sub in your head. You can also write it down and differentiate it. You'll get that for the answer. Very nice. Okay, number 36. Integrating log base 2 of x dx. Oh my god, we don't usually talk about log base 2 huh, in like integrations or um, differentiation, but we still have to face them sometimes. So here we go, we have log base 2 like that. <sighs> okay, we are going to use the change of base formula because we don't like log base 2. So here is the deal. I want to use natural log, right? So, the change of base formula says this right here is actually the same as natural log of x over natural log of 2. And natural log of 2 is a constant. You can just take that to the front. So you have 1 over natural log of 2 all the way in the front. And we have to integrate natural log of x like that. Well, what's the integral of natural log of x? Again, we have to do it by integration by parts. So, if you remember the answer, that's good, but if not, do it. Integrating 1, because I cannot integrate an actual log, that's what I'm trying to do. Differentiate this guy, I get 1 over x. Integrating this, I get x. That's nice. So, the integral of this is going to be, we still have the 1 over natural log of 2 in the front, parentheses, and we will have the inside being this times that, which is x natural log of x. Let me do this down in blue, why not? I still have this right here as x times natural log of x. And don't forget, when you multiply this right here, this is still an integral. 1 over x times x is just 1. Integrating 1, you get x. So you have minus x, like that. Okay? So that will be pretty much it. But do you guys want to see the natural... Do you guys want to see the, L, uh, the log base 2 back? If you do, this is how. Multiply this and that, you end up with x. Let me just write this down right here. Yeah, let me write it down right here. x. I'll put this down in blue. You get ln x over ln 2. And then you have this over that, right? So you just put down minus x over ln2, not put on plus e yet. This right here is precisely our log base 2 of x. So right here I will just put down x times log base 2 of x. 
you, know, you can put a little parenthesis to make sure it's closed, and then minus x. There's no natural log, so you have to leave it as this. x divided by the constant natural log of 2. So you are done right here. Okay? Whoa, okay, okay. We are doing good. We are doing good. We are doing good. <sighs> Take a look of my mirrors on metal. <sighs> okay, number 37. This is a fun one. People like it. People wish that I put this one on the test. Integral of x cubed sine of 2x dx. How do we do this? Yes, integration by parts. So let's put on d and then the i right here. And uh, I will have to have, let's see, plus, minus, plus. I don't know how many I need. But let me just write down, I want to differentiate x cubed. I want to integrate sine of 2x. The truth is, when you differentiate this, it's nice. 3x squared, 6x to the first power, 6. I need one more. <laughs> so put on plus, and then the derivative of 6 is 0, like that. So we also have to face the integration. Let's see what to keep our mind straight. Integrating sine, we get negative cosine, and then the input is 2x, and then you have to divide it by 2. Okay. Integrating cosine is positive sine, and then the sine stays the same, the input stays the same. Divide it by 2 again, so you have 1 over 4. Do it again. Integrating sine, you get negative cosine. Negative times negative is positive, so we have positive, and it's going to be 1 over 8 because you have to divide it by 2 again. Do it again, because this is for that row, and then let me just break down plus 0. So you have 1 over 16, and then the integral of cosine is positive sine, and then the 2x stays. Whew. First part, second part, third part, fourth part of the answer. So final answer, let's see. I will do this times that, which is negative 1 half x cubed cosine of 2x, and then negative times negative. I believe that's positive, 3 over 4 x squared, and then we have sine of 2x, right? Yes. And then this times that is positive. 6 over 8 is 3 over 4. So reduce your fraction, 3 over 4, and then the x. And then again, here we have the cosine of 2x. And lastly, 6 over 16 divided by 2 divided by 2. So we have 3 over 8, and that's a minus minus 3 over 8, and uh, we have sine of 2x. Right? And in case if you guys cannot, put, cannot see a plus c, I'll just put on plus c right here for you guys. Right? So here is the answer. As you guys can see, after 37 integrals, this brand new marker earlier is drying out. But it's okay. We are still strong, okay? We stay strong. So that's number 37. So now, let's see. Thirty-eight. Let me write it down right here. We have the integral of x squared times the cube root of one plus x cubed. Looks kind of weird, but it's actually pretty easy because we can actually just do a nice u sub for this. Let u equal to the inside, 1 plus x cubed. Why? Because the derivative of this, du is precisely 3x squared dx. And then you see, you have that over there already. Now I will show you guys something that's like slightly different. Usually you can just divide this on both sides to isolate the dx. But you see, I just need a constant multiple. And lo look at 3x squared, that's what I need. I don't have the 3. So let me multiply by a 3. But if you multiply by a 3, you change the whole thing. So that's bad. So now you can just divide it by 3. That's OK. So now what I'm, I'm talking about is this right here is the 1 third. OK, we have 1 third. But this and that, I'll put this down in blue to make it stand out. 
this 3x squared along with the dx is our du now. Very nice. So I will just write this down as the integral. This inside is still my u, and then the cube root is the same as 1 third power, so I put that down as the 1 third power. Again, the rest right there will be the du that we have. Very nice. And to integrate this, of course, we're just going to add the power. 1 third plus 1 is going to be 4 over 3, so you look at this as 4 over 3, divided by this new power, which is multiplied by 3 over 4, like that. In the end, you see that this and that cancel, and we have 1 over 4. You have u to the... Well, depends on people to look at it. I think in calculus we are fine. We can just write this as the cube root. And then u to the fourth power inside. And u is that guy. So I just put this down as the parentheses with 1 plus x cubed, but to the fourth power like this. And if you want to reduce this more, you can. You can write this down as 1 over 4. And you can take out one of the 1 plus x cubed to the first power, and you will just have the cube root of 1 plus x cubed inside like this, plus c. So I think this might be better for s some people. The, the textbook question, they may want to just do that for the answer in the back of the book. You know, after you, when you guys run marathons, if you guys like reach the halfway mark, you can eat like, they'll give you like um, energy gel. So, I will eat my credit bar for now. And drink some coffee. Maybe later I'll drink some like, Gatorade. Huh? My legs are tired, so that's why I'm like, doing this. I cannot do 13 now with this two spot. Well, let's see. I have that to help me, so maybe you can do a lot of this in your head. So, of course, after 100 integrals, you guys should be like a super expert of integration, right? But the dirty truth is that there are still a lot more <laughs> out there you have to be careful with. There are still a lot out there in the real life. So be careful, okay? Anyway, number 39, we are going to integrate 1 over x squared plus 4 and then square that like this. And then we have the dx, right? Well, x squared plus 4, which is the same as 2 squared, and in this case, we are going to do tricks up. It's easier this way, in my opinion. What I'm going to do is I will take x to be 2, because the 4 is like 2 squared. And this is the sum of two squares, so I will put a tangent for it, so a tangent theta. And then, of course, dx will be 2 times the derivative of this, which is secant squared theta, d theta. Now, take this integral to the uh, theta world. This is going to be the integral. Now, check this out. This right here, it's going to give me a 4 in the front if you factor it out, and then tangent squared plus 1, right? Tangent squared plus 1 is going to be secant. So we will have 1 over uh, 4. Yeah, 4, and then secant. Okay, just work this out. Secant squared theta. And then you have to square that. Right? You still have to square that. And you still have to multiply by this. Multiply by 2 secant squared theta d theta. Now, here's the deal. Well, this right here can be cancelled, so you are going to cancel this, and this is technically 4, right, because secant to a fourth power, that's what I mean. This right here is 16 secant to the fourth power theta, but you can cancel this with two of them out, so this is technically a 2 now, right? And then, of course, this and that can be crossed out as well. This is going to be 1, and this is going to be 8, all that little uh, stuff. So technically, you have 1 over 8 as your constant multiple. So I'll put that down right here. And then we have the integral. And here's the deal. Now we have 1 over secant to the second power. 
uh, theta in the denominator, right? One of that. And then to integrate that, we have to bring that up to the numerator in another word, which is the cosine square theta. Uh, I'm sorry, we cannot do this with this little spot. I don't think so. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have to erase this. So to do that, yes, we have to use the reduction, the power reduction formula for, for that. So we will see. Let me try to fit in as much as possible here, okay? All right, so we have one over eight all the way in the front. And then for the blue part, of course, you know the formula is one over two. And then of course we have the integral. And then the rest is one plus cosine of two theta like this in the theta world. So it's like that. So perhaps I will just continue right here. This is also integral sign, you guys. So cool, look at that. Now, in the front, all the way in the front, this is equal to 1 over 16. And let's put down a parenthesis and the result of integration. Integrating 1 in the theta world is theta. And then integrating cosine, we get positive sine. And the uh, input stays the same, but we have to divide it by that 2, which is the 1 half right here, right? So that's what we have. Yeah. And then we have to go back to the x world. Before we do so, this right here is double angle, so I will look at this as Right, let's do this. This is 2 sine theta, cosine theta. And of course, this 2 and that 2 will be canceled. It. That's nice. So this is now 1 over 16 times theta. And this times that is plus 1 over 16 sine theta, cosine theta. How can we go back to the uh, x world though? Use that. So you know from here, I'll just say, remember, I'll just put on remember seriously, remember, tangent theta, this right here is x over 2, because we can divide 2 on both sides. So from here, I will just draw my right triangle. This is my right angle, here's my angle theta. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, and we also have to figure out the hypotenuse, which is right here, and that's just the square root of x squared, plus this square, which is going to be 4, but let me put on 2 square first. Now, we are talking. First of all, I need the theta by itself, so let me just take the inverse tangent on both sides. Therefore, you see that theta is just the inverse tangent of x over 2. I need to put on this for that. So we have 1 over 16. Inverse tangent, let me just write it down in graph, why not? Inverse tangent of x over 2. And then, right there, we have plus 1 over 16. Sine theta is this over that. And we are all adults now. You don't really have to worry about the square root in the denominator, okay? So x squared plus 4. And cosine theta is this over that. So we have 2 over square root of x squared plus 4, like this. In the end, <laughs> cancel things out. This, this is 8. This, this, the square root is gone. So final answer is 1 over 16 inverse tangent of x over 2, and then you have plus 1 over 8, and then you have x on top over just um, this, right? And perhaps I'll put down 1 times x is just x, and in parentheses x squared plus 4, like this. Well done, plus, plus c. So this right here is the answer. Good. All right, next one. Okay, so let me tell you guys that from question number 40 to question number 49, we will be doing the hyperbolic trig functions. So if you haven't covered that yet, you can uh, skip to question 50. All that. Okay. Right, number 40 here. 
integral of well integral from 1 to 2 okay integral from 1 to 2 square root of x squared minus 1 dx and the truth is you guys cannot see the 2 so let me write it down better <laughs> right, let me write it down again number 40 integral from 1 to 2 okay and then square root of x squared minus 1 dx the truth is you guys can also do tricks up for this but um, where's the fun if you just do tricks up all the time right so here's the deal consider the graph right here which is just going to be a hyperbola yeah so we'll look at the right hand side okay so here's the deal so you pretty much have x squared, sorry, you pretty much have y squared minus x squared, sorry, 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 you pretty much have x squared minus y squared is equal to 1, and then you get like a side weight hyperbola like this, okay? So it's more like this. I know I've just done tricks up or so, but like, you know, this is the fun part. Again, x squared minus y squared equals 1, and you want x to be greater than zero in our case, greater or equal to one, right? just this part. All right, so you have this portion of the hyperbola, and remember, when you are doing the definite integral, you're trying to find the area under the curve. And technically, when you have the square root, you just focus on the top, so you don't really need to worry about the bottom. So this right here is the y equals square root of x squared minus one, right? Looks like, let me do it again, right? Here we go, much better. Continue, it's going from 1 to 2. This is the area that we want. This is the area that we want. Where's the geometry that we can do? Here, hyperbolic trig functions. Here is the deal. From 1 to 2, well, I can connect the dots from here to here. And the idea is that when you have a point on this hyperbola, this point right here is denoted by, of course, you have two ways to do it. You have the x value, which is 2, and you also can just plug into here, so you know the y value here is y is equal to square root of 2 squared minus 1, which is square root of 3, like that. No big deal. But this right here, it's also going to be the following. You can also look at this as the cosh and sinh. Of something, right? Cosh and sinh of something. And of course, my blue marker. That input is in fact twice as much as that area in blue. So, if you don't know what this area is, perhaps I will just put on T for it, right? I'll just put on T for it, for this. I'll just put on T for it. But technically, you, oh, you, I feel like. This reminds me of the Dr. Um, not, not Dr. Yeah, this reminds me of the Dr. Bing movie, like when he was trying to uh, fix the paint and then he made it worse. Anyway, t over 2, okay? So that the input will be t and t. If you know this part right here, if you know this area here, and we call that to be t over 2, okay? Then um, the input right here is twice as big as that. It's twice as much as that, right? So that's the idea. So how can we find out this area, though? Here's the deal. Let me just show you. This area is going to be the following, okay? Take a look. We have a what? We have a triangle first. On the outside, from here to here, of course, this is going to be a triangle. So it's just going to be, this length is two altogether, right? This length is two. So. The area of the triangle is 1 half times 2 times the height, which is the y value that we got earlier, which is just square root of 3. And that's very nice. Now, we have to just minus, we just have to minus the t over 2. Right? As I said, this right here is our area right here, t over 2. So, uh, what does this mean, though, t over 2? Well, Remember, this is the hyperbolic uh, trig functions. Technically, this point right here is 2 comma square root of 3, isn't it? If you have the x comma y form. So what does this mean? 
You can say that cosh t is equal to 2. And in another word, you can just take the inverse cosh on both sides. So t is equal to the inverse hyperbolic cosine of 2. Just like that. Very nice. But don't forget, well, we have the t over 2 already, so you can just put this right here for the t, and you're done. Seriously, that's it. So that's one way to do it. Or I will tell you, you can also do this. You can also set sinh, right? Sinh of t to be square root of 3. And take the inverse sinh on both sides. So t is the inverse hyperbolic sign, or the inverse sinh. You can also put this right here for the t, and you are done. <laughs> so it depends on how you want to do it. So I'll just tell you guys the answer, okay? The answer to this integral, then just draw the arrow. Of course, 1 half times 2 is just 1, and then you have the square root of 3. Minus, uh, because you have to have the whole area minus the blue area to get the remaining area here, right? Uh, you can put down this right here cosh inverse of 2, and then you divide it by 2. So this is an answer. And if you would like, you can also use this. So I'll write this down real, here, real quick. Or square root of 3 minus sinh of, it was inverse sinh of square root of 3 over 2. Like that. And do I need to put on plus C? If you are still watching, go ahead, like, answer that, and also leave a timestamp. Yeah, that's it. I think that's really cool. Right? So welcome to the hyperbolic tree function section. All right, one sheet done, 40 questions. 40 questions. <sighs> Next one. I think I'm going to change marker because this right here is kind of like drying out, okay? So I'm going to change marker. So one marker down, and I'm going to take out my red markers just in case for later on. So put this back for that. Okay. Oh. Are you guys still watching? All right, so now, uh, 41, much better, huh? 41, we just want to integrate sinh of x dx. This right here can be really easy. If you use hyperbolic functions, then they will tell you the integral of sinh is just cos of x plus c, like that. And that's it, if you would like, right? That's it. This is totally OK. And the idea is that if you look at sinh, Right here, the idea is that you can also change that to the exponential form, which is e to the x, and this one is minus e to the negative x all over 2. And then you have the dx right here. And now, if you integrate this, you actually end up, okay, the over 2 is just always over 2, right? So then you have the integral of e to the x is e to the x, and then the integral of negative e to the negative x is positive e to the negative x, like this which is the same as cosh. And that's it. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> All right, number 42. Yeah, since she is with minus in between and cosh is in the plus in between, yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to do everything in my head, OK? Next one, uh, we have the integral of since square x dx. And remember how we um, do the integral of regular sine square? Well, we also have a power reduction formula for this guy. So to do so, let me tell you, the, end, the, the identity is 1 half. And one done. Hmm. Okay, so I will just prove this real quick because I kind of forget about like, how, how, how this is. Um, here is the deal. As I said, if you take sinh to be e to the x, 
minus e to the negative x over 2, right? And this time I have to square that. So let me just square that. So you get 1 over 4, which is 1 over 4 the way in the front, okay? And then you will have e to the 2x and then minus 2, because this time size is going to be 2 right here, and then minus e to the negative 2x. And uh, I want to somehow produce the cosh to help me out. This is how. Well, first of all, you can look at this as 1 over 4 times negative 2. And then you combine this with 1 over 4 with this guy, which is e to the, oh, by the way, this should be plus, uh, 2x plus e to the negative 2x, like that. So as you can see, we have What am I doing? Let's see. One half all the way. Negative one half. Yeah. And then plus. This right here is a deal. Let's look at 1 over 4 as 2 times 2. Okay? Because if you look at this part in black, you actually get this. Okay? You actually get cosh with the input being 2x. That's very nice, isn't it? Right? And then you still have the 1 over 2. So it's trickier, right? So I can factor out the 1 half, and then you have the integral, and you start with negative 1, okay? You start with negative 1. So it's different than the um, regular sign situation. And you add cosh of 2x like this, okay? So the idea is, if you forget about the identities, just go ahead and prove it real quick. <laughs> so anyway, negative 1 and then plus cosh of 2x, like that. All right, enough talking. Here we go. Integrating this, we get 1, well, 1 half in the front. Integrating negative 1 in the x world, we have negative x. Integrating cosh is so the same as uh, just think. Derivative, there's no negative, okay? So when you integrate cosh, you get sinh, and the input stays the same, but divided by 2, so you multiply by 1 half, and it's still plus, and then in the end you distribute the 1 half, so you have negative 1 half x, this times that is plus 1 over 4, sinh of 2x, and you are done, put plus c, done deal, okay, done deal. Not that bad, not that bad, take a look, take a look, okay. Next one, we did a uh, sinh to the first power, sinh to the second power. Of course, let's talk about the sinh to the third power. Sinh to the third power. All right, so I'll put this down right here for you guys. Number 43. Let's talk about the integral of sinh to the third power of x. And this time, I'm going to do this in a faster manner. To do so, you're going to integrate, well, Sinh square x, you are going to take out one of the sinh to help you out. And then the idea is sinh square is the same as something. Well, again, let me prove you two guys real quick. The truth is when you have x square minus y square equals 1. And the idea is this right here is cosh of t, and you square that minus this is the sinh. Okay, sinh square t, like that. Um, equals 1. Over there, I want to have sinh squared. So what I do is, I bring this to here, I bring the 1 to here, so I will write this down as cosh square x, and then minus 1. Very good. And then we still have the sinh x on the outside, right? So, so far, I think I have edged everybody, right? Yeah, I did. Anyway, right here, I'm just telling you guys that let u equal to cosh x, and then du is equal to positive. The derivative cosh is still positive, okay? Positive sinh x dx. So here's the deal. You get u squared minus 1 du. Integrate that. You end up with 1 over u to the third power, and u is cosh. So I just put down cosh to the third power x. And then, don't forget, you have to minus 1, right? 
and you have to integrate that in the U world. So when you integrate that in, in the U world, you get cosh. So you are going to minus cosh of x, and you are done, per plus c. That's it. Okay. That's it. OK, so sinh first, sinh second, sinh to the third power. Now, number 44. Integrating 1 over square root of x squared plus 1 dx. Of course, this is the same as saying integrating 1 over, I can change water, doesn't matter, 1 plus x squared dx. Remind you of something. Yes, you should. Okay. Let me remind you guys. Okay. Note, here is the truth. When you differentiate regular inverse sign, okay, regular inverse sign, you get 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. But when you differentiate the inverse hyperbolic sine of x, the only thing that's different is instead of the minus, you have the plus. So you have 1 over square root of 1 plus x squared. And here's the deal. If you know this differentiation, of course, you should know this integral. The answer to this right here is just nicely equal to inverse sinh of x. And you are done. Put plus c like that. And if you really want, you can also do a trick stuff for it, but I'll leave that to you guys. All right? OK, so here is the next one right here. Number 45, <sighs> integral of natural log of x plus square root of 1 plus x squared dx, right? Here is the deal. The truth is, this right here, it's asking us to integrate this right here. It's the same as that with a negative 1x like this and a dx, right? So the truth is, this right here, it's equal to natural log uh, parentheses x plus square root of x squared plus 1 or square, 1 plus x squared doesn't really matter. Same thing, seriously, plus 1. I mean, x squared plus 1 plus x squared, like this. They are the same thing. If you guys did uh, trick stuff for this, take x to be tangent, right? Tangent theta, you end up with this right here. But I'll leave that to you guys. And again, you have two forms for the inverse hyperbolic. This is the uh, natural logarithm form for it. And the beauty of doing so is that this right here, we can do integration by parts. And of course, you can also look at that. Doesn't matter. Anyway, here we go. We do integration by parts. I'll put it down right here. D and an I. I will be differentiating this right here. Okay, The inverse hyperbolic sign of x, I'll be integrating 1. Plus, minus, it's enough. The truth is, when you differentiate this, guess what? We did that. Well, well, I didn't do it, but like you should know that. Well, you should know how to do it. So you have this plus x squared. And when you integrate that, you have x. First part of the answer. So this is going to be x times inverse, uh, let me see, inverse hyperbolic sine of x. And then we have to minus this integral, right? We have to minus this integral. Again, we have to minus this integral. And here's the idea. This is the minus, it stays. When you have x over that, the integral for that is just nicely equal to square root of 1 plus x squared. And then you are done. Right? Real quick, if you differentiate this, you see you put 1 over 2 with this inside, or in the denominator. And then multiply by 2x, the 2 cancel, so you have the x on the top over that, and the negative is on the top already, so this is done. Like this. Right? So that's cool. Now, okay, we talk about enough uh, things business. Let's get to somebody else. Tench, how's that? Uh, number 46, integral of tangent, but with the h now, x dx. Woohoo! Let's see. <sighs> okay, of course, you can do it this way. This is the integral. 
this is just like the regular tangent. This is the same as sinh. Yes, I'm still back to sinh. X over cosh x dx. Here's the idea. Let u equal to cosh x, like that. And then du will be uh, positive sinh x dx. So you have 1 over u in the u world. Integrate that. You get natural log absolute value of u, which is cosh of x, like this. Okay, just like that. And this is very, very nice. And we're done plus plus C, and we are done. Okay, no negative. For the regular uh, tangent here, you have the negative derivative of regular cosine. Uh, derivative of regular cosine is negative sine x, and you have a negative in front, but this right here is clean, right? really, really clean. Okay, now, seriously? Hyperbolic secant. Hyperbolic secant, okay, let's deal with this. We can do it, no problem. 46 integrals, 46 integrals. And hopefully you guys can be convinced that these aren't the easy ones, right? N not a lot of them are easy ones. Sometimes we do like uh, some easy ones once in a while, but you know, most of them are pretty difficult, I think. Okay, number 47, integral of hyperbolic secant of x, like this, dx. This time, yes, you can do the similar trick that I did uh, with the regular secant, but I'll show you guys slightly different. First of all, this right here is the same as 1 over cosh of x. And the problem is that, you see, I don't have the sinh x to help me out, unlike this. But it's okay, don't give up. I'm going to produce something to help me out as well. Well, I will just multiply the bottom and the top by cosh x. Cosh x. Why? Because the idea is, on the top now, yes, I have that cosh x. And remember, cosh square x is equal to what? Sinh square x plus 1. So we can use the identity. I can write down 1 plus sinh square x like that for you guys. With that being said, in fact, we can do a little u sub, let u equal just the sinh to the first power of x, because this way, du is cosh x dx, which is the one that we have on the top. And then we can take this integral to the u world. Integral of this right here is the du, and then on the bottom is 1 plus u squared. Very nice. Right? So this ends up pretty nicely. And then in the end, of course, you end up with the inverse regular tangent. Right? No h. Right? So far. I think that's the first guy right there. No h, no h, okay, no h. Inverse tangent, this is the regular version, and you put the u inside, and then u is, of course, the sinh of x, like that, and you are done. So put a plus d. <sighs> done, okay? Energy, 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 we still have the energy, okay? Now, let's see, we have 48. I'm going to erase this now. Forty-eight. I'm not kidding. We are going to be integrating the square root of hyperbolic tangent x. Integral of square root of hyperbolic tangent x dx. And in fact, one of my former students, Edward, he was a guest speaker on this. But you know, maybe some of you guys haven't seen it, so we're going to do it right here. Here is the deal. We are going to start with the u sub let u equal to the whole square root. So let's see, u equal the square root of a uh, hyperbolic tangent of x, and then let's get the dx. So let's do a few things in your head. Square both sides, and then take the inverse hyperbolic tangent on both sides. In another word, x is equal to the inverse hyperbolic tangent of u square. And then I'll look at this and differentiate. dx will be Okay, when you have the h right here, when you differentiate this, it's 1 over 1 minus this thing squared, so u squared, and then you square that, and don't forget the chen lu, multiply by the derivative inside, which is 2u, like this. Okay, it's like that. Now, we will see this is the integral. This right here is our u, and then the dx is all this, which is 2u over 
1 minus, oh, don't look at that u, 1 minus u to the fourth power du. And then as you can see, this right here, you can try to do partial fractions. I'll show you guys this way much better. Right? Integral, I will have the 2u squared on the top, okay? 2u squared over 1 minus u to the fourth power, and then the du. Right? So let me just focus on the 2u squared. I'm not going to do the um, usual u. I'm not going to do the usual um, partial fractions. You'll see. This is better. Well, as we all know, we can factor this out. And if you factor this, you are going to get 1. In this format, it's going to be 1 minus u squared times 1 plus u squared. Let's talk about how to make things happen. So let's see on the top, we have the integral. On the bottom, we have the 1 minus u squared times 1 plus u squared. On the top, we have 2u squares. So we can look at that as u squared plus u squared. How's that? Right? u squared plus u squares, like that. So that's fair. And now, hmm. Well, wouldn't it be nice if somebody has a 1, somebody has a negative 1? Well, perfect. That's minus 1 here and plus 1 here. Everybody happy. And you'll see this right here is equal to the integral. And let me just write this down clean for you guys. So I'll pair this up, which is going to be, of course, be careful with the negatives. You will end up with negative parentheses. If you would like, you can write it as 1 minus u squared like this and then over this denominator, which is 1 minus u squared times 1 plus u squared, and then right here, plus, this is good, so you don't have to do anything tricky, but I'll change order just to make that look better, u squared times 1 plus u squared, like this, u. Here's the deal. This and that cancel out nicely. This and that cancel out nicely. Well, well, you have the first one being the integral, and you have the negative, 1 over 1 plus u squared, and that will give us inverse tangent of u, and u is this guy. So we put down the square root of the tangent, but you have the h, so the hyperbolic version of tangent, like that. Very nice. And then you add, if you have 1 over 1 minus u squared, you can use the inverse tangent for it, right? So, we'll just get 10 with the h inverse, and then it's really symmetrical, very nice, square root of 10 x, because that's a u, and then you are done, like this. Right? You are done, you are done, you are done. <sighs> okay, I was, I'm expecting to finish this in six hours, I don't know if that's the case or not, but we'll try, right? This is 48. No, my god, I missed it. Sorry, this is technically 49. But the good thing is, you see, this is 49. 48 is the inverse tensh. My bad. So pretend that you haven't seen this, right? Okay, here is the deal. Number 49, I mean 48. You can travel back in time integrating inverse hyperbolic tangent of x dx. Integration by parts in action. So d and then i, I will just put on plus minus, differentiating the inverse hyperbolic tangent and then integrating 1, which you get x. And then when you do this, you get 1 over 1 minus x squared. I meant to show you guys this first, so I can talk about this much better, but like, you know, you guys can handle this, right? Anyway, this times the first part of our answer. Very nice. So you get x times the inverse hyperbolic tangent of x, like this. Next, you are going to be subtracting, and you have to do the integral of this, right? So multiply this. Don't forget the integral x over, the, over that. Well, let me just put this down in 
blue for you guys, just to make it clear. We have to minus the integral of x over 1 minus x squared dx. But I will do the u sub in our head, right? So I will put down the part in black first, the first part. Again, x. Inverse hyperbolic tangent of x. This part, you let u equal to the denominator. And when you differentiate that, you get negative 2x. And then, of course, that x and x will cancel. You have the negative 1 half. Negative times negative becomes positive. So you have plus 1 half. And you get a natural log situation. So you have natural log. And this might be negative. So you have to put up the value and then 1 minus x squared like this. So that's pretty much the idea. And the deal is that if you differentiate this, yes, you will get that. So I think that's clear. Plus c. OK? Tiring. This thing is heavy when you hold it for three, or like two hours and 15 minutes. That's my iPhone over there. Let me take a look of my iPhone. It's still going strong. Very good. I like it. I am also going strong as well. Hopefully that's the case. All right, so 49. Now let me just erase both of them. And we'll do 50, which is a very different style question. Right? Number 50, we're halfway done. Oh my god. Integral of, I mean, integral from 0 to 5. Oh my god, man. Let me do it again. Integral from 0 to 5 of the flow function of x dx, like that. This is the integral from 0 to 5. Perhaps the best way to do this is to show you guys a graph of the uh, flow function. So to do so, I'll just show you guys this right here real quick. The idea is that you're going to pay attention to the integer values first, starting at 0. And then you have, of course, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And here is the deal. When x is 0, uh, flow of 0 is 0. When x is 0 0.1, well, it's still 0. When x is 0 0.9, you still get 0. Anywhere in between of 0 and 1, you get 0, including 0, but not include 1. But when x is 1, you get 1, so you have 1 right here. 1, 2. You are going to have some y values. So you are going to get a bunch of this. Likewise, one, when x is at 1.7, you still get 1. So it's going to be a straight line up to 2. And then when x is 2, you have a solid circle there. And then you pretty much do all this. Jump, jump, jump. It's a plain Super Mario. And you stop right there. Well, for this right here, we can just find the area under the curve. Although it's not continuous, but we're not using the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2. We're just finding the area under the curve. All right, so the base right here is 1 times the height is 1, so this is 1. And then this right here is 1 times 2. The rectangle here is 2, which the area, the area is 2, and then 3, and then 4. In the end, the answer to this right here is just, let me write it down, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. And I'm going to do this one carefully. I believe the answer is 10. If I add this one wrong, it's going to be bad, but I think the answer is 10. Okay, let's see. Okay, next one, 51. Getting back to the regular uh, trig functions, secant to the 6th power of x dx. How do we do it? Take out two of the secants and then do some uh, identity business. Very good. Integral secant square x dx. Inside here, I will have secant to the fourth power, in another word, secant square and a square. And the secant square is the same as tangent square x plus 1, and then you have to square that, right? That's pretty much the idea. So you take a u sub, that u equal tangent x, and then you get du equals secant square x dx, and then you can take this to the u world. This is the integral of u squared plus 1 
and then you square that and then you have the du on our side like this very nice very nice all right expand this real quick you get u to the okay u to the fourth power plus 2u squared plus 1 du and then lastly we're just going to uh, integrate this and put back the answer you get 1 over 5 u is tangent so you have tangent to the 5 power right here x and then integrate the next term we have plus 2 third tangent of or well, to a third power of x and then plus u u which is tangent x right? plus u and then that's tangent and you're done put plus c so this right here is it right see after 51 integrals this right here seems pretty nice and easy so that's it okay now 52 let's see all right integrating 1 over parentheses 5x minus 2 to the fourth power. That's it, right? That's it. Again, do not have the natural law addiction. This right here, you have this to the fourth power. Technically, you will do a u sub. So you do u equal 5x minus 2. And then do the derivative real quick. The u will be 5 dx. dx is 1 over 5 du. So take this to a u world, this is going to be the integral of 1 over u to the 4th times 1 over 5 du. So now we are integrating 1 over 5 in the front, integrating, and this is u to the negative 4 du. And with that said, we can say, we can just add 1 to the power, which is going to give us negative 3, and then divide it by the new power, so we have that, so all in all we have negative 1 over 15 and then we have u to the negative 3 power we can bring that down to the denominator this to the third power maybe put a 1 better this should be u and u is 5x minus 2 and we're done plus, plus c right now next one okay integral of natural log of yeah, you can see that. 53. Integral of natural log of 1 plus x squared dx. Can we do u sub? No. No, I don't have x on the, in the front to help me out. But I will do the integration by parts. So d and then i. Integrating just 1 and then differentiating natural log of 1 plus x squared plus minus. Differentiating this, you get 1 plus x squared, and then you multiply by, okay, the chain do says 2x, and then right here you have the x. So here we go. This right here gives us this times that, yeah? So we have x times natural log of 1 plus x squared, and then we have to integrate this guy, which is minus, and let me put this down in blue. So minus the integral, x times x is of course x squared, so we have 2x squared. And perhaps I'll write this down right here for you guys. I'll put a 2 in the front. A 2 in the front. And then the x squared over 1 plus x squared dx. And what's this? Yes, this is one of my favorite integral. So what I'm going to do is I will just dump 1 plus here and a minus. Very nice. So in another way, you will see this is going to be x natural log of 1 plus x squared minus. All right, let's do the integrals first, yeah? Check this out. You pair this and that up. It's just 1. Integrating 1 in the x world, you get x. And then the next thing is 1 over that, which is going to give us inverse tangent. And this is the regular version, OK? Well. Don't forget we still have the 2, so you have to distribute it right here, and then distribute it right here. And technically, that was a negative 2, so negative 2 here, negative, negative becomes plus. So, with that said, we are done. We are done right here. Where is my... Okay, here. You see, it's only been a while, now it's like this 32, so oh my god. <sighs> Let's see. Okay. And if I make any mistakes, I don't know, I'm sorry. 
maybe this no i shouldn't say this is going to be a remake i don't know and seriously after i finish this if you guys want to uh challenge the record go ahead and do so if you can do like say 110 integrals in one video guess what i will do a 150 integrals to beat you so that's not going to be healthy so just just don't 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 do it <sighs> yeah all right, so that was number 53. We have 47 more to go, three hours, right? 47 more to go. So it's looking good. It's looking good, right? It's looking good. So how are you guys doing so far? Huh? I don't know what you guys are doing at the moment where you guys watch somebody integrating for like five, six, seven hours. I don't know. Anyway, number 54, I will write it down right here for you guys. We are integrating 1 over x to the fourth power plus x dx. <sighs> yes, we can factor things out. We can factor on x, parentheses x cubed plus 1. And you can actually factor more and can do some partial fractions if you would like. But no, I'm not going to factor it this way. This is how I factor it. I will factor out an x to the fourth power, and you'll see this right here will be 1, and this right here will give us x to the negative 3 power. Here's the deal. Whenever you have 1 over x to some power plus x, x to a whole number power plus x, you can do this. It's going to be working out really nicely, okay? So, you see that the idea is that this is equal to when you have x to the fourth power in the denominator, you can put that up as x to the negative 4, isn't it? And then you have 1 plus x to the negative 3 power. And from here, we take a u sub. Let u equal to the denominator, 1 plus x to the negative 3. du is equal to negative 3x to the negative 4 dx. Let me show you guys the cancellation. dx is equal to divide this on both sides, du over negative 3x to the negative 4. Now take this integral to the u world. This right here is an integral of x to the negative 4 over u. This is very nice because dx is this. You have the du over negative 3x to the negative 4. And guess what? Yes, this and that can be cancelled. And now you have negative 1 over 3. And then integrating 1 over u in the u world, of course, that's natural log absolute value of u, and u is this guy. Just write it down. 1 plus x to the negative 3 power, and guess what? We are done. You don't need to do partial fractions sometimes. When you have this situation, just go ahead and factor out the biggest power, and this is going to work. Very nice, very nice, very nice. In fact, we've seen a question like this earlier, so that was good. Number 55. Integral of 1 minus tangent x over 1 plus tangent x dx. <sighs> My god. Okay, no big deal. I don't like to work with too many tangents in an integral. We can look at the tangents as sine over cosine. So this is sine over cosine. Likewise, this is also sine over cosine. We can multiply the top and bottom by cosine. In another word, this right here is the integral of cosine x minus sine x. Let me actually write it down over there. We have space. This right here is the integral of cosine x minus sine x over, this right here is again cosine x plus sine x dx. Well, what's so good about this? Look, what's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. What's the derivative of sine? Positive cosine. So you can just take a u real quick. You can say u is equal to cosine x plus sine x. And then you can get the du is the top, which is just going to give you natural log absolute value of the denominator, which is the cosine x plus sine x. Let me actually just write down the answer over there to save some space. So natural log absolute value, the denominator, which is cosine x plus sine x, like that. Very nice. 
plus C. I think my C is getting smaller and smaller. Mm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be disrespectful to the C. Anyway, that's it. <sighs> okay, X times secant tangent. Okay, so number 56, integral X times secant X tangent X dx. What do we do? Integration by parts. D i on the side, integrating what though? Can we integrate tangent? Yes. Can we integrate secant tangent? Yes. Let's do ahead. Let's go ahead and integrate secant x tangent x, differentiating just x. Even though it has three functions multiplying together, but no worry. When you integrate this guy, you get secant x. That's very nice. When you differentiate x, you get 1. But can we keep going? Yes, because when you differentiate this again, you get 0. And don't forget the signs have to be plus, minus, alternating on the side. And then when you integrate secant, you get natural log after the value of secant x plus tangent x. Okay? I was just trying to check to make sure that everybody is working properly for my uh, quick time player. Hold on, okay? I wasn't looking at the answers whatsoever. Anyway, this times this, namely x times secant x, and then minus this times that. Minus this times that is just natural log of the value of secant x plus tangent x plus c, like this. Okay, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, yeah, pretty good. Like that. That was 56. Now, oh, inverse secant. 57. You know, some professors, they are going to take some questions from here and then they are going to put it on the test. So, you know, it's a really good practice if you are like in Cal 2 or if you just want to be a, uh, know how to integrate all these things correctly, all that. I'm going to use blue pen. What do we do? Yes, integration by parts. It's right here, D and then the I. So plus, minus, differentiating what though? That, of course, integrating 1, which is x. Differentiating this, you get 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. That's a derivative of inverse secant. Okay? So we see that this right here, this times that's the first part of the answer, namely x times inverse secant of x. And then, of course, you are going to do this right here, which is still going to be an integral, but x times x in the denominator here, it cancel out. x times this, this x cancel out. So you have to minus the integral of 1 over square root of x squared minus 1 dx. Okay. Yeah. And how do we do this? Well, maybe you can do some hyperbolic trig functions business, but I'm out of those things, right? Because that was just from question 40 to question 49. So I will do this one legitimately with you guys. Notice this is slightly harder because you have the square root of x squared minus 1. If you have 1 minus x squared inside, that's inverse sign. That would be easy. But anyway, right here, I will take x to be secant theta, and then dx will be secant theta d theta secant theta, tangent theta, d theta, sorry, like this, right? So perhaps I'll just do this one in blue for you guys right here, and I'll put on all the answers over there real quick. So this integral is going to be the integral of 1 over square root. x is secant theta now, so you have secant square theta, and then minus 1, and then dx is this, as I said, so we have secant theta tangent theta, d, theta, like that. All right, now, this right here is tangent squared in the square root, which is tangent. So you have actually just tangent right here, tangent theta, but this right here is going to be out of that. So you are just integrating secant theta, d, theta, which is going to be natural log after the value of secant theta plus tangent theta, like this, right? To save some time, I will actually go back here now because I pretty much know what will be going on. This right here is x times 
inverse secant of x, and then minus, well, we have the natural log, absolute value, secant theta is x, so that's nice. And then we have to add, what's tangent though? Go ahead, draw the right triangle real quick. This is the saying x over 1, so if you draw a right triangle right here, put the theta here, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, so x over 1. On the other side here, this is the square root of x squared minus 1. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so tangent theta is just going to be square root of x squared minus 1. Right? I believe this is the inverse hyperbolic cosine, but I'm going to leave that to you guys. This is too bad. Anyway, with that said, we are done right here. So I put a plus C. This right here is the answer. Right? So take a look, take a look, take a look. Okay, now 58. I'm not going to put on this. Take a look, okay? I'm going to erase everything. I think that would be... I can do this. <sighs> okay, 58, right here. 58. Integral of 1 minus cosine x over... 1 plus cosine x dx. Now, you have choices. One, you can multiply the bottom and the top by the so-called conjugate. Namely, you multiply the top and bottom by 1 minus cosine x. That will work. Or you can also do the following. Because you have seen that, well, notice when we have the reduction formula for the squares, you know cosine square theta, this is 1 half, parentheses 1 plus cosine 2 theta, right? And similarly, you also know that when you have sine square theta, this right here is 1 half times 1 minus cosine of 2 theta, like this. So these are good, and we can utilize them. So the deal is that, first of all, we can multiply both sides by 2, and then just plug in x over 2. Yeah, for the theta, then we can get this done. So I'm just going to work this out right here for you guys. Here is the deal. This integral is the same as. To get 1 minus cosine x, I can look at this. I will multiply by 2 on both sides. I will get... 2 right here, okay, I'll get 2 right here, and then I will have sine, right, the top one is sine, square, but as, as I said, this right here is 2 theta, you have to put in x over 2, x over 2, so here you have x over 2, right, like that. Similarly, on the bottom, multiply this equation by 2, this identity by 2, and then and then, let's see, you have the cosine square. Again, you put theta as x over 2. So you have x over 2 here, like that. This is going to be quicker. Okay, This is going to be quicker. Yes. So if you utilize this, that would be good. Of course, the 2's cancel. And the beauty is that this right here is just going to be tangent square with x over 2 as the input. To integrate tangent square, of something, you will look at the secant version for that. So in other words, you look at this as the secant square of x over 2 minus 1 in the x world. So now, when you integrate this guy, well, integral of secant square is tangent, and you put the input to be the same, x over 2. But you have to divide it by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of this is 1 half, so you have to multiply by 2 and also integrate minus 1, which is minus x, like that. Well done, put a plus c. This is it. Okay, not bad. 
Okay, next one, number fifty-nine. Number fifty-nine. We have the integral of x squared square root of x plus four dx. Here's the deal. Why? Okay, yeah, you can take a look. Fifty-nine is that. Why don't people put a square inside and make this to the first power? Why don't people do that? And yes, I'm pretty much blaming myself. <laughs> okay, we can still do use up for this. Believe in the U world. U world sometimes is much better. Take U to be x plus four if you like. If you take the square root of x plus four, I think that's okay as well. But I'll just take U to be x plus four. Du is the same as dx. So let's go ahead and get going. This right here, the integral. But this time though, you will see this is the square root of u, and the dx is du. So there's nothing to be cancelled with the x squared. x is not allowed in the u world, so you have to look back to see what x is. You can subtract 4 on both sides. In another word, x is equal to u minus 4. So look at this x and plug in x minus 4 for it. So parentheses, x minus, I mean, u minus 4 for the x, u minus 4 for this guy, and then we have the square. Okay, we still have the square. This right here is actually not so bad because you actually just will end up with power functions. So let's do this right here. And we have to be careful with the powers now because it's uh, question 59. This right here, we have u squared minus 2 times this and that, which is 8 u to the first plus 16 and then this right here is the same as saying u to the one half power du and then distribute everybody so first you have u 2 plus one half you get 5 over 2 I believe yes and then minus 8 times u 1 plus one half is 3 half lastly plus 16 u to the one half power okay du Still good. Now, go ahead, add 1 to the power. 5 plus 2 is 7 over 2. So I'll put that down right here and then divide it by the new power, which is 2 over 7. This right here, I will add 1, which is going to be 5 over 2, divided by that, which is the same as multiply by 2 over 5. And then right here, I add 1, which is 3 over 2, and I'll divide it by that, which is 2 over 3, like this. All right, now, Let's see, we have 2 over 7, and I'm not going to write in the radical form, I'm just write it in the power form, okay? I have u, which is x plus 4, so I have x plus 4 for the u, to the 7 over 2 power, and then, of course, this times that, you get minus 16 over 5, u is x plus 4, and then you have the 5 over 2, and this times that is plus 32 over 3, and this is x plus 4 to the 3 half power. And this is a totally okay answer. Don't tell me to factor forever. Seriously, I'm not going to care about factoring. This is good. Okay, this is good enough. Now, number 60. I will challenge myself to fitting number 60 right here. We are going to be integrating. Oh, well, I'm going to erase this a little bit though. To have more space. Okay. We will be integrating from negative 1 to 1 square root of 4 minus x squared dx. Let me tell you, if this question was from negative 2 to 2, it might be easier. Why? Because this right here is the semicircle with radius 2, right? This right here. So I will Perhaps just put this down right here. It's going to be bigger like this. Semicircle with radius 2. So this right here will be negative 2. This right here will be positive 2. And this right here will be 2 as well. If you go from negative 2 to 2, that means you find the area of the semicircle. Very easy. Pi r squared divided by 2. But we are going from negative 1 to 1. So this is how we do it. So this is negative 1. Let's say this is 1. So you're going to go from here to here. As we all know, we can just find out one of the area and then double it. So let's go ahead and say this is the 2 times 
this area here, okay, the integral from, let me just write it down, this is 2 times integral from 0 to 1, square root of 4 minus x squared dx. Easier this way, right? So, we'll be focusing on just this part. How do we do it? By geometry. First of all, if you want to get this uh, area, of course, you can see we have a triangle, we, we have a triangle like this. This right here is 1. What's the height though? Well, y is equal to square root of 4 minus x squared. When x is 1, the square root of 3 then, isn't it? When x is 1, you get 4 minus 1, which is square root of 3. So, first of all, don't forget you have the 2 in the front. Right? You have the 2 in the front. And then you are going to multiply. The area of this triangle, which is 1 half times 1 times square root of 3. Okay? And I'm going to have more space, so I'm not going to look at the... I want to have more space, I'm not going to look at the left-hand side. I will double this anyway, okay? Now, I need to figure out this right here, because you want to go from 0 to 1, so you need to go from this right here, which is 0. And you need this, which is the area of a sector. I think this marker is not the one I want. This is. I have a lot of markers right here just to get ready. So, the area of a pizza. Uh, pizza list sounds really good now. <sighs> well, first of all, we have to know that the radius is 2, right? And how do you find the area of a sector? Don't worry, I will already down right here for you guys. So, when you have a circular sector like this, and when you have the angle theta here with the radius r, then let me tell you the area is equal to one half r squared theta. Alright? So r is 2, that's okay. And of course you have to have this black triangle plus the red sector, so you have to add. First let me just put on the one half times 2 squared, that's good. And now we have to figure out the angle theta. Well, where's the angle then? The angle is, of course, this right here. This is the angle theta. But how can we do it? Notice this right here is 1. So, of course, you know this right here will also be 1. And check this out. You have a right triangle now by looking at this. Okay? You have a right triangle now like this. And you don't know this, unfortunately. What well, you do know, but we are not going to use it. <laughs> Let's use 2. This right here is 2 as, as well. Because when you use this, you can use the inverse sign. And in fact, if you do this by uh, trick stuff, you end up with inverse sign somewhere as well. Anyway, in this situation, you know that sine theta is equal to opposite. This is the opposite over adjacent, which is 1 half, like that. So, can you guys tell me what's theta then? Of course, it's the inverse sine of 1 half. But seriously, can you guys tell me Sine of what will give me uh, 1 half? Well, this is a special right triangle, isn't it? Yes, it is. This is a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. This is 30 degree, which is what? Pi over 6. So, you just multiply by pi over 6, like that. And you are pretty much done. Okay? So, this right here is pi over uh, 6 for the 30 degree. Okay? Uh, let's see if I can do this math in my head. First of all, 2 times this is just gone. You have square root of 3. Alright, check this out. 2 times this is gone. You have 4. 4 times something over 3 is 2 thirds. So plus Two third, and you have the pi next to it. I believe this right here is the answer. Let's see. Yeah, I think so. <sighs> let's see, let's see. Four beyond two. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. And in fact, you, if you use this, that would be square root of 3 and use the uh, inverse cosine. And you just get the angle, you still get the angle, same angle anyway. So it doesn't really matter which one you use. Okay, so 
40 more to go. Oh my goodness. All right, number 61, right? Number 61. This is also a pretty long one, so I'll do it fast. Square root of x squared plus 4. Now, what's next? Next to it, dx. So this is the one I have plenty for you guys, okay? Tricks are not now. You have to complete the square first. To do so, well, let me just make a note right here for you guys. Here is the idea. When you have x squared plus 4x, to complete the square, you need a plus 4. After that, right? Oh, this marker doesn't work. No, this is not the one I want. This is the one. Here we go. You want to add the 4 after that. And this marker doesn't work anymore either. Use this one instead. <laughs> okay, we are going to add okay, 4 and then minus 4. This mark is weird. 4 minus 4. All right, this right here will be a perfect square, x plus 2 square, and then this right here is minus 2 square. So here we go. This right here is going to be the integral, and you have the square root. Let me just put down this right here as x minus well, x plus 2 square, and then minus 2 square, right here for you guys, dx. And then from here, we are going to do a trick sub, right? So this one will actually do it legitimately. So I will take uh, this right here, this input to be my uh, secant. I want x plus 2 to be my secant. But here is the deal. We have a minus 2 square, so it's technically my 2 secant theta right here, okay? Technical difficulty, I'm sorry. It's a markers. Anyway, now, differentiate both sides. dx will be the derivative, which is 2 secant theta. Um, let me actually write it down. Yeah, I think it's okay. dx is equal to 2 secant theta tangent theta d theta. And now we'll take this integral to the theta world. This is going to be the integral of the square root. Okay, this right here. Let's, let's, do, let's just do this. This right here, I'll put a 2 secant theta inside, and then I'll square that. So 2 secant theta, okay? This is my whole this. And then I will square this guy, and then minus 2 square, and then dx is all that which is 2 secant theta tangent theta d theta. Now, we'll see. Let's just do this right here real quick. This is 4 secant squared minus 4, factor out of 4, and you have the square root of 4, which is going to be 2, okay? So let, let me just, uh, let me show you guys. Uh, let me just show you guys the word. There are 4 times, and you get a, secant squared theta minus 1. And square root of 4 is 2. Square root of this, which is tangent squared, you get tangent. This, this is not denominator. You have to multiply this with that. Therefore, in fact, you end up with 2 times 2, which is 4. You can take that outside, and then you have the integral, and you have tangent, tangent, which is tangent squared, and you have the secant here. So in fact, let me put down the secant theta here, and I will actually do this. To integrate secant theta times tangent squared theta, I will actually first change the tangent squared theta to secant squared theta minus 1, like this, right? So again, this times that is secant squared, so that's what we end up with, yeah. And then we have the d theta. And now you are looking at this as 4 times the integral. Yes, this times that is secant cubed, and this is the secant to the first. Thank God we did all that earlier, didn't we? Yes, we did. That's nice. Another 
big integral sign, 4, and then let's put on the result of the integration. What is the integral of secant cubed? Put this sign in blue, 1 half. Secant theta times tangent theta plus 1 half tangent theta. Uh, sorry, 1 half ln secant theta plus tangent theta, right? And then we also have to have the minus right here, the minus uh, secant theta. Well, minus and the integral of secant theta is 1 ln absolute value secant theta plus tangent theta, like this. Right? This right here is still in that big parentheses. Now, let's do a few things. First of all, let me just combine this and that together real fast. This right here is 4 on the, in the front, and the parentheses, this is 1 half secant theta, tangent theta, 1 half minus 1 is negative. So let me just write down negative 1 half. And then, of course, we have the natural log, absolute value, secant theta plus tangent theta, like that. <sighs> okay, here is the deal. Of course, going back to the uh, X world, so enough talking. Let's take a look of this right here. Let me do this in red. We know that secant theta is equal to divide 2 on both sides, so we get x plus 2 over 2. From here, we can draw a right triangle real quick. Here is the right angle, and here is the angle theta. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, and the opposite side is going to be the square root of this square minus that, which is square root of x plus 2 square minus 4, right? Minus 2 square technically, but it's minus 4 anyway. And guess what? This right here is the original. So this right here is the same as square root of x squared plus 4x. You see how much trouble we have if you don't have the right thing? So yeah, anyway, I think we are ready to go though. This times this, this times that. This times this is 2. Yeah, don't forget the 2. Secant theta is this, so I'll put this down in red. So we have x plus 2 over 2. Tangent is what? Tangent is this over 2, so we multiply by square root of x squared plus 4 over 2. This times that is minus 2, natural log, absolute value. Secant is this again, x plus 2 over 2. And then we add this over 2 for tangent, so square root of x squared plus 4x over 2. Very good, very good, very good. Of course, you can do better. First, this, 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 they all cancel. Second, this is technically plus C1. Uh, I should put this down in red. Technically plus C1. Because right here, again, you have the natural log of the top divided by the bottom. So you have natural log of the top minus the natural log of the, of the, of the bottom, which is a constant. You're going to come up with that constant. This right here, of course, you put parentheses around the x plus 2. Finally, I already sound right here for you guys. x plus 2 times the square root of x squared plus. It should be a 4x, okay? It should be a 4x. I caught my mistake. Oh, that's good, but I'm not sure if I make any mistakes earlier or not. Though. Minus 2, I will just put a natural log of the top, which is just this, and the truth is. I think this sometimes could be negative, I believe. If negative, if uh, x is a big enough negative number, I think. Let's see if x is negative, I don't know. Well, this is longer than that. If x is big enough negative, uh, let's see. Do I need absolute value or do I need parentheses? Let's see, let's see, let's see. But what I'm saying is, I will just put down x plus 2 along with the square root of x squared plus 4x. 
If x is negative 5, this is going to be negative 3. Okay, this is negative 3. Negative 5 is going to be 25. Negative 5. Yeah, I, wait. Negative 5 plus 25. And then minus 12. Well, you know what? I'm not going to worry about the absolute value or not. I'll just put on absolute value just to be safe. Don't, 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 don't be mad if I have the absolute value and then, yeah. But the deal is that divided by 2, that's just a constant, okay, with all that. So I will just put down finally plus C2. <sighs> that's still bothering me, but I will see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Negative 5. Negative 3, that will be 3 minus. Well, x cannot even be negative 3, why? Wait, if x is negative 3, how come x cannot be negative 3? Negative 3 will be 9, and then negative 3 times that is minus 12, which is no good. You know what? Let's not worry about the domains whatsoever. Yeah, so, oh, I see, because you have a um, hyperbola and then you shift it around places, all that stuff, so <sighs> just, just worry about that on your own. But I showed you guys the integration step, I just, yeah, that's all. Okay, so that was 61, took us a long while to do that. Okay, so take a look. All right. Well, that was like the first question that I actually have to use the whole board, huh? Because the other ones, I can kind of fit into the uh, other ones. <sighs> Alright, 62. Integral of x squared, and then we have e to the x cubed dx. This is how I show you. Check this out. It's nice because the derivative of x cubed is what? 3x squared. I have x squared, but I don't have the 3. So let me just multiply this by 3, but divide it by 3. So this is pretty much the derivative of that, right? So the answer is just going to be 1 third e to the x cubed plus d. This is nice. If you do use sub, you end up with the same answer, but like, you know, that was quicker. Well, the point with this question is, if you switch this a little bit, if you have x cubed, e to the x squared. I want to insert that, that, that crying mean, but like, you know, I am not going to edit this video, but like that, that one, you know. Hmm. Integration by parts. Give it a try. Let's see. This time, we have to think carefully, though. Like, what kind of integration by parts? Like, how are we going to... Uh, make things work. I is the most important one first, so let's do it. Well, I most likely have to deal with the e to the x squared, but I cannot integrate this. I will have to have an x in front to help me, just like this earlier, huh? So I will do that right here. And in the meantime, let's see, I have x squared left, so I will have to, um, I will have to, I will have to um, in, uh, differentiate it. <laughs> I will have to differentiate x squared. And here is the deal. When you integrate this, again, you can do that. And you end up with 1 half e to the x squared. This is doable. And we can integrate this again. Check this out. Well, no, I mean, you can differentiate this, which is 2x. Here's the deal. Yes, the first part is going to be this times that, which is going to be 1 half x squared e to the x squared. That's nice. And then you are going to be integrating this times that. So integration by parts works because you have this x that's helping you out. Well, let's see. Let me put this down in blue. So we have to minus the integral. 2 and 1 half cancel. You have x e to the x squared dx. Ah, similar, huh? So we can do it. This is going to be 1 half x squared e to the x squared and then I will just write down the rest in blue. Minus, I need a 2, and I need to divide by the 2. So just doing your head. Well done. 
Ah, well done. Done, yes. Ah, I have uh, two more pages. Right, number 64. Right, number 64. I have the integral of tangent x times the natural log of parentheses with cosine x inside. Integration by parts again? Anyone? No. U sub, if you take this to be sine over cosine, maybe. But better choices. I can let u equal to natural log of cosine x. Check this out. Natural log of cosine x, like this. Why? Because when you differentiate this, the derivative natural log of something is, of course, 1 over that thing. And then the channel says multiply by the derivative inside, which is negative sine x dx. This is precisely tangent, but you have a negative. Doesn't matter. So we know dx is just negative, and then you have the tangent. Well, technically, right, let me just make this clear. This is negative, and this is tangent x dx. I will have to divide the negative tangent on both sides. So dx is du over negative tangent x. Very nice, huh? So you have the integral, and this is tangent x. This right here is our u, this is our big brother u. dx is this guy, so you multiply by du over negative tangent x. Tangent, tangent. Cancel, cancel. Negative, negative. Still in the front one. Just one, okay? I'll just say it twice. Negative still here, negative integral u squared. Well, that's almost the answer. The integral of negative. Negative integral of u du, this right here gives you negative one half u squared, u is that, so put this in your parentheses with natural log of cosine x inside, and you square that, and you're done. Plus plus c, b half p, 65. Right. Ah, let's see, integral 1 over x cubed. Minus 4x squared. Unfortunately, this one is not the one that we can just factor out the highest power and then make things work. We have to do the dirty work to uh, do the partial fractions. So here's the deal. I will do the partial fractions here, maybe. Uh, I will have to factor out the x squared, and then this is going to be x minus 4. Huh. So here is the setup for the partial fraction. On the left hand side, I have 1 over the original denominator, which is x squared times x minus 4. And the setup is this. This is x squared. You have to build out the power. Well, maybe you haven't seen this before, but I will show you how. You can look at this as quadratic, no problem. If you look at this as x squared, like this, then you will have to make sure you have a, li a linear term on the top. Namely, you will have to have ax plus b on the top. And then you have a linear term, so you are going to add x over 4 in the denominator, x minus 4 in the denominator, and then the c. But in fact, this is what I mean by build out the powers in my previous video. Right here, you can split the fraction, and you get ax over x squared, and then plus b over x squared, and then plus c over x minus 4. Look at this, x over x squared, they cancel out. So you actually just have a over x plus b over x squared plus c over x minus 4. Again, the idea is that if you have a repeated linear factor, this is technically as saying x to the first power times x to the first power. In that case, you have to build out the power. So you can actually just go from here to here every single time because this is going to work. You can imagine if you have 1 over x to the 5th power, the 5th power, then you will have to have a over x to the 1st, plus b over x to the 2nd, plus c over x to the 3rd, plus d over x to the 4th, and plus e over x to the 5th, and then plus the next alphabet over x minus 4. 
Alright, so I will just pick this up right here for you guys. We are going to be uh, integrating this right here. Well, I'm not, not yet, partial fractions. So we have a over x to the first power, and then we build out the power b over x squared. Again, thanks, we don't have x to have 2. That's second power, that's good. Plus c over x minus 4. Here is how we are going to do it. I will do cover up for b and c. Unfortunately, a will do some work for it. Check this out. To integrate, to, to get c, you come here and you cover this up, and you have to let x equal 4, okay? Because this is, x has to be 4. 1 over 4 squared, you get 1 over 16. Good. And then when you have a over x, you come here, well, no, sorry. Because you have to have the same exact denominator. b over x squared, you're going to come here and cover up the entire x squared, and you plug in 0 into here, so you have 1 over negative 4, in another word, negative 1 over 4. This is good. For a, unfortunately, you have to do more work for it. But, remember you use 0, you use 4, you haven't used 1, and it's a nice number, so I'll just say, use x equal 1 for a, put 1 into all the x, you see that this is going to be 1 over 1 times negative 3, which is 1 over negative 3, and this is going to be a, I don't know, over 1 is to a, and then this right here is minus 1 over 4 over 1 squared is still this. Okay, putting 1 into here, you have, this is equal, look, this is going to be minus, because you have 1 over 16, over negative 3, so you multiply the denominator, so you have uh, 3 times that is 48, like this. And then you get your little common denominator, so you multiply this by 12, multiply this by 12, so you get, let me just do this real quick, this is negative 1 over 3 equals a minus 13 over 48, and then you are going to multiply this by 16 and 16. And then you get, this is 16, this is, okay, negative 16, I, I kind of know the answer, but like, let me just show you guys all the work. And then I'm going to make sure that I don't make a mistake, because if I do make a mistake, that's not good. I add the 13 over uh, 48 on both sides, so I will end up with negative 3 over 48, right here, right? And that's equal to a, which a is equal to, reduce that, you get negative 1 over 16. I think that's that's good. All right, now what we are doing is coming back here and then write this down as the integral. A is negative 1 over 16 over x. Let me just put that down, negative 1 over 16. Right, and then we have the over x. That's the first one. All right, and then the next one, B is negative 1 over 4. So let me just put down um, plus negative 1 over 4 like this over x squared, and lastly we have to add 1 over 16 over x minus 4, like that. Pretty good. And then I will take this, put the dx right next to it. Right, so that's pretty much the idea. Here we go, let's integrate this in our head. First of all, this is just a constant multiple. Write it down, negative 1 over 16, natural log, absolute value of x. Good. This right here is just as easy, so I'll put down plus 1 over 16, absolute, well, neg abs N natural log, absolute value of x minus 4. I know, I put down plus c, I could not, huh? technically not. Here is the idea. This is like saying x to the negative 2, add 1 to the power, which is negative 1, divided by that, negative uh, times negative is positive, so you have a positive, so I put on plus, and this is the plus. Do not put on natural log here, yeah, no. Uh, you end up with 1 over 4, 
and uh, x like this, right? So if you differentiate this, you get that. Uh, yeah, we have the answer right here. So build up the power when you see the power is being repeated. Okay, like that. Uh, number that was sixty-five. 66, I will fit in here. And then, let's see, this is the integral of sine x times cosine of 2x. You have two choices to do this. You can use the product to sum formula, or you can just use the double angle identity for uh, cosine. I will use the double angle identity for cosine because this right here, in fact, you have three versions to do it, but you have the sine x in the front, in fact, I want to stay with cosine here. I will put down 2 cosine square x minus 1. And does this look familiar to you guys? It should, right? Because if you add one or that, you can prove the uh, power reduction formula. So anyway, this is pretty much the idea for that. And then from here, you actually have to take a u sub. I'll just say let u equal cosine x, and du will be negative sine x dx of course and this is only a sign so you know you have to have a negative in the front okay and then you have the integral this this and that will be uh, du so you have the du right here okay and then you have 2 and then you have u square minus 1 right Yes, and then you are going to just integrate this negative parentheses. This is going to give us two third u to the third power. Let me actually make it clear for you guys: u to the third power right now, and then minus u like this. Right. Finally, distribute it and then take this back to the x world. So you get negative two third, and the u is cosine. So we have cosine to the third power x. Negative times negative is positive, and then you have cosine. Do not just put on x, you have to integrate 1 in the u world, so that's why it becomes cosine here. Cosine x like that, and we're done. Put plus c, like this, right? So that's it for that. And uh, I am going to see this is 60. Uh, 6. I'll put this down. I will go take a quick restroom break, but like the restroom is kind of far away, so uh, I'll just close the markers over that. Still recording? Still recording, okay? And I'll drink some coffee. I think a lot of integrals non stop. Oh. Tiring! By the way, my girlfriend got this for me. Cool, huh? All right, be back soon.
Okay, almost four hours. Drink some Gatorade. I tried to wash my hand, but it's still dirty. Yeah, those markers aren't that good. Anyway, 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 anyway. I should use the thing out. Maybe I'll yeah, leave it out. Okay. Okay. <sighs> All right, so. Stretch, jump. <sighs> right, sixty seven, I believe. And then Pushing sixty seven and then In case I need more markers, I have more. Huh? I have more black ones and that stuff. <sighs> okay, in this video, no, just kidding. I know I'm recording, okay? So, <laughs> number 67, integrating 2 to the natural log of x power. As you can see, the power is a function that's no good. And here is the deal. I'm going to prove this to you guys uh, like in two lines or so. But this is actually the same. This is a really cool. You can actually switch this and that. This is actually the same as saying integrating x to the natural log of 2 power. And the deal is that this is a constant now. And you can do the usual thing. You can add 1. But perhaps I will just put, let me put a parenthesis first, add 1, and that's new power. And you divide it by the new power, which is 1 over 1 plus natural log of 2. So in the end, you can actually end up to get 1 over 1 plus ln2, and then you end up with x to the 1 plus ln2 power, right? And if you would like, you can write this as 1 over 1 plus ln2, and you know this is the x to the first power, x to the first power, times x to the ln2 power, x to the ln2 power. And the deal is that this is the same as the original. So if you really want, you can do the following. This is the same as, put down x right here, as how it is, but this I'll write it back as, 2 to the natural log of 2. So we have multiply 2 to the ln2 power and then divide these guys by 1 plus ln2, like this, and then we're done. Plus 2. No, 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 no. 2 to the ln x power. Sorry, sorry. Like that. Okay? So we are good. Now, I'll take, a, take some time to show you guys why this is true. Because as usual, we don't like to work with space 2. We like to work with space e, okay? So, this is what we can do. We can look at this as integral 2 is the same as saying e to the ln 2 power. And then you take this raised to the ln x power like that, right? And then, of course, you still have the dx. But once you have this right here, you know you can multiply the powers. You can look at this as the integral of e right here and then ln x times ln2 and you can actually take the ln2 to become a power so you can look at this and then raise that to the ln2 power like that and then the dx 
very nice. And this right here is just a nice X. And that's why this works, right? So that's pretty much it. Now, next we have number 68, which is the integral of square root of 1 plus cosine of 2x. Okay, I show. Sixty half thirties. Okay, I should be able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So let's see this right here. We have I show you. I show. I show. I have shown you guys this earlier, right? This right here is just the integral square root. You don't need to do a conjugate business because this is just equal to two times cosine square of x, isn't it? Right? Again, if you use the, we can also just plug in um, this being 2 cosine square x minus 1, which is just uh, very nice. And here's the deal. This right here is square root of 2. You can just take that out, and then you have the integral, and then you have square square root cancel. So you just have to integrate cosine x dx. So in the end, this is just square root of x. Integral of cosine x is positive sine x and you are done very nice it looks weird but it's actually decided to be pretty nice now number nine. Oh god let's see number not number nine number 69 right here integral of 1 over 1 plus tangent x dx this is bizarre because if you write this as sine over cosine let me tell you it's not going to work out nicely you have to really yeah, you can do it like that, but you have to think harder. You stop, it's not going to work out nicely, okay? We are going to do that. Don't do the conjugate. So, now, let's see. Have we done this earlier already? Yes, we have. One of the questions we have done earlier is the 1 minus tangent x, right? So, I will just tell you, we recall, let's put this down right here, we call one of the questions when we have the integral if you have 1 minus tangent x over 1 plus tangent x dx this right here it was actually pretty easy you can rewrite everything in terms of sine cosine and you end up with natural log of absolute value of cosine x plus sine x and of course you, I'm not going to put on plus d because this is just this is the main dish this is not this is easy. We did it. And imagine if you have the plus right here. That would be also just as easy, isn't it? Because that would be just 1. Now we are going to see how to make things happen, all right? So I am going to, OK, let's look at the 1 right here. I have two integrals I know better, not this, though. So I'm going to write this down right here. This is the integral. OK, so here is the deal. I want to have 1 plus tangent x in the denominator, sure. And I also want to have this guy on the top, which is 1 minus tangent x. Well, in that case, well, I will just add a tangent x to it. That's OK. And uh, sure, let's, let's do it this way. I'll do pair of the colors for you guys better. Let's do this in blue and red, like Spider-Man. Right. So let me write this down better for you guys. So I have 1, and then I want to, uh, as I said, this was easy, so minus tangent x. Okay, But this is not the same as the original, so let me just add the tangent x back. Right? So that's what we have. However, 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 if you just have tangent x over that, it's kind of hard. I want to have a 1 right here as well. Now, let me just say plus 1 right here. But if I, if I add 1 right here and then minus 1, that kind of defeats the purpose. But guess what? 1 plus 1 in blue is 2. To get 1, we can just divide it by 2. So I will just put on a 1 over 2 right here. In fact, this is still equivalent to the original. That is very nice. So, in fact, this is going to be 1 half, and now let's pair things up. 
we have the first one right here, which is 1 minus tangent x over 1 plus tangent x, and let's close that integral. And I'm going to split that into another integral, so I'll just say plus the other one, which is the integral of 1 plus tangent x over 1 plus tangent x dx. Very nice, very nice. And we know this already, which is that. So I'm going to just write this down. I will distribute the 2, which is 1 half. And the answer to this integral was natural log absolute value of cosine x plus sine x. All right? And the answer to this integral is just x. <laughs> so we add, perhaps I'll put this down in red, why not? x. Yes, I still have to multiply by the 1 half. I remember that, okay? And then we are done. Plus, plus c is right here. Yes, it. Oh, I clicked bar time, seriously. Huh? So that's the deal. Now, number 70. The integral from 1 over e to e, square root of 1 minus natural log of x, and then square, and then divided by x. Okay. Well, u sub, of course. Let u equal natural log of x, because that's our only uh, candidate. That's like the, the one that makes the most sense. And then du is, of course, 1 over x dx. Ha! Huh, that's very nice. Well, don't forget, this is x going from 1 over, x, 1 over e to e. So here is the deal. Take this integral to the u world. u goes from what? When you put 1 over e in here, 1 over e is the same as saying e to the negative 1. Put into ln, you get negative 1. e in here, you get positive 1. So u goes from negative 1 to 1. And then you get the integral of the square root of 1, or 1 minus u squared over x, and then the dx. Well, dx is technically x du if you multiply x on both sides. So they cancel nicely. Here, nice, very nice, because this right here is precisely a semicircle with the radius 1. And we are going from negative 1 to 1, and we just need to find the area. Of course, it's just going to be pi times r squared like pi r squared, but since this is just a semicircle, so you divide by 2. So therefore, pi times 1 squared over 2. In another word, pi over 2. Pi over 2, and then we are done. Very nice, isn't it? And now I'm going to see if I can switch another marker. I don't know if this is going to be a better one. I don't know. I have an expo. Usually, expo works better. We'll see if this one. It's a good one or not. So that's it. And that was number 70. And Okay, number 71. Here we go. And in fact, let me just do this because this is what I do uh, a lot. Let me write down two integrals on the spot for you guys. The first one is the integral of 1 over cube root of x and then plus 1 on the outside, like this. And then number 72, let me just write it down on the side right here. It's the integral of 1 over the cube root of x plus 1, both of them inside, okay, like this, and then dx. Which one do you guys think is easier? The answer should be this one, because we can just do a simple u sub, right? We can take u to be this, so u is equal to x plus 1, and in fact, you don't really need to do the u sub, because this right here is just seriously pretty easy. 
integral, you know this is u in the denominator with the cube root, in another word, u to the negative 1 over 3 power. And then this is the du right here. Right? So let's go ahead and add 1 to the power. Negative 1 third plus 1 is positive 2 thirds divided by this power becomes 3 over 2. So in the end, we have 3 over 2. And then the u is this guy, which is x plus 1 to the 2 third power. And if you would like, 3 half. And then this is the cube root of and put the x plus 1 inside with a square, and then you are done. Very nice, very nice. Now, number 71. Slightly harder, in fact, it's pretty hard. Let's see, take u to be square, no, the cube root of x, and then along with the plus 1 constant. I want to get the dx by itself. So, in fact, let me just get the x by itself first. Let's do this in your head. x is what? Minus 1 on both sides, and cube both sides, so we get u minus 1 cube. And then differentiate this, and I'll just put on differentiation right here for you guys. Save some time, okay? Integral, 1 over, this is u. dx, go, don't forget to dif uh, differentiate this. You get 3u minus 1 squared du. That's from here, right? So, again, you are going to put a 3 on the outside integral and expand this, which is u squared minus 2u plus 1 over u du. It's longer, but it's not that bad. This is going to be 3 integral divide, divide, divide. So you get u minus 2 plus 1 over u du. Alright, this is going to be 3 parentheses and integral, integral, integrate. You get 1 half u squared minus 2u and then in the end plus ln u. Absolute value. Yeah. In the end, put that back. So you have 3 over 2, right? 3 over 2, of course. And then u squared, u is that, which is the cube root of x plus 1. And then square that, and then minus 2 times 3, 6. u is that. I'm not going to distribute, okay? I'm not going to distribute like this. And then you have this guy, and then what else? Last is 3 times that, so it's plus 3 natural log absolute value. You need the absolute value because cube root sometimes can be negative, but like, you know, we, we will be study, we, we won't care that much. That's it. Technically, if you would like, you can say negative 6 times 1 is negative 6, and you can just put the constants together and all that, but I would just say, well done, plus, plus C, I'm not going to distribute anything. This right here is good enough. All right, 72. All right, let's do 73 right here. 73, really classic one, the integral of parentheses of sine x plus cosine x squared dx. How do we do this? Well, don't take the u sub yet. Expand it, not that bad. Integral of the first term is sine squared x plus the second term is 2 this times that, which is sine x times cosine x. The last term is cosine squared, so we add cosine squared x dx, like this. And do you recognize your friend? Yes. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x, this is nicely equal to 1. And then do you also recognize this friend? Yes. This friend right here is just sine of 2x, the double angle identity backwards. So I will just integrate this guy instead. Very nice. Integrating 1 in the x word is just x. Integrating sine, we get negative cosine. And the input stays the same. And of course, divided by 2. In the end, we're done. Put plus c. Okay? This right here. It's it. Alright, so that's pretty much... Hmm, I'm debating if I can do the next one right here. I don't think so. Let me just do it like this. Try to see if I can clean the board uh, well enough or not. All right, 74. This right here. 74 will be integrating. 
I haven't done, I have never done this many integrals in one day in my life, seriously. <sighs> 2x times natural log of 1 plus x dx, like this. All right, integration by parts. So let me put this down right here for you guys, d and then i. Let me integrate 2x and I will differentiate ln of 1 plus x. And don't forget the plus minus on the side to get ready. Go ahead and do this. You get 1 over 1 plus x. Integrate this, you get nice. Um, it's nice to equal to x squared. And then go ahead, do this times this. So you will have the first part of the answer being x squared times natural log of 1 plus x. And then, well, we have to do this integral. Right? This is the integral that we have to do. Minus the integral x squared over 1 plus x dx. Now, you have two choices. One, you can do u sub, or you can do uh, long division. Perhaps long division would be better, so let's do long division, but they are pretty much the same anyway. When you do long division, this is what you do. Right? So I will put this down right here. Let me just do it right, I think you will do it right here. Put the top right here, and then put the bottom in this order, x plus 1, like this. What do we need? You need x. x times x will give me x squared. x times 1 will give me plus x. And you don't forget to subtract. When you subtract this, this minus that is 0. 0 minus this is negative x. And in fact, we can do it again because we can put on minus 1. Minus 1 times that is negative x. And then times that is minus 1. Subtract, you get 1. On the top, the water doesn't really matter. Technically, you should have lined up all the x together like this, though, but it doesn't really matter. And then earlier, I need a negative one like that. So if you focus on this part, this is going to give you negative integral. All this together says you have to have x minus 1. OK, that's the, the, the whole part. And then the remainder is the plus 1 over x plus 1 dx, like that. So up to you whichever way you want to do it. Now we'll see. This right here is the answer, the first part of the answer already. So keep it. Do two things in your head. Integrating this, you get 1 half x squared. But don't forget to distribute it, you get minus. Next, integrating this, you get x. But negative times negative is positive. Lastly, this times that is minus. Natural log times the value of x plus 1, like that. And technically, let me tell you, you don't need the absolute value. Can you know? Can you get why? Because originally, if you put this down already, you are preventing x being less than or equal to negative 1. So you don't have to worry about that. So technically, you could just put parentheses. But seriously, I'm not going to care too much right here. Right? And I'll put a plus c like that. All right. Now, let's see. Number 75, 75% done, you guys. <sighs> Integral of 1 over x times 1 plus sine square of ln x, like this, dx. U sub, get rid of something, right? Get rid of, uh, get rid of the ln, so u equal ln x. And then you will see du will be 1 over x dx. So if you pair this and that up, you get your du, OK? So with that said, you are looking at the integral of 1 over 1 plus sine squared u. And then again, this and that together will give you the du. So that's good. But now I have some trouble because I don't know a good identity for 1 plus sine squared u. I need to have the cosine to help me out. So how can I do it? You can try to multiply cosine if you would like, but I will choose to divide everybody by cosine squared. Because I know sine divided by cosine will give me tangent. And when I divide it by cosine, I will get secant. And since this is with uh, sine squared, let me just divide everybody by cosine squared. Right? Divide everybody by cosine squared. Or technically u, okay, cosine squared u. Divide everybody by cosine. 
square u. Right? Like that. And hope for the best. It will be the best. Let's see what we get on the top now. We will get 1 over cosine, which is secant square x over. This right here is also secant square x, and this is tangent square x, isn't it? That is very nice. And again, the goal is to somehow, you know, maybe put this on the side to help me out. And to do so, let's look at this secant square. We know secant square is the same as tangent square x plus 1, isn't it? So, as you can see, we have the integral on the bottom. We have this plus that. So I've already done this. Um, this for you guys. 2 tangent square x. Sorry, u. I'm in the u world, I'm sorry. Everybody should be in u, okay? In fact, I wanted to just show you guys this question, but I wanted to make it slightly more complicated. So I, I did this substitution, so yeah, anyway. U, 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 okay? U. Anyway, so this plus that is 2 tangent square U, and you have the plus 1. And let me just put a, let me just, why not just put a secant square U on the top, the U. And here, I will take another substitution. I will take W to be tangent of U. And you will see dw will be secant square u du, which is exactly what we have on the top. Now we take this to the w world. We will get integral of 2, and this is going to give me w square, and then plus 1, and then all in all on the top will give me dw. Hey, this is almost like inverse tangent, but not quite. You have to put this down in a nice way. Uh, let's see, I should write it down here, say some space. Integral 1 over this right here, put parentheses, fill in the parentheses with square root of 2, and then w, like this. And then square, and then plus 1, and then the dw. Technically, you have to do another substitution, that whatever, u, v, w, and then you can use like y or x or t, whatever you want do this. But let's just do this in our head, yeah? In the W world, this is what we are going to get. Uh, if you let T, okay, let's use T, you get, you have to divide, just divide. The big picture is, you end up with the inverse tangent of square root of 2, W. But divided by the derivative of the input, which is you divide it by square root of 2, like this. Check this out. When you differentiate this, you put this as 1 over this thing squared plus 1, and then you have to multiply by this, by square root of 2, and 1 over square root of 2 cancel, so that's good. So that's the idea. Well, u is... <laughs> w is tangent u, and then u is natural log of x. Okay, so now, since I'm getting serious, finally we go back to the uh, w, we, we go back to the x world right away, okay? So, inverse tangent, square root of 2 times w is tangent of u, but u is natural log of x right there. Eh? Remember, you see, u is natural log of x. So I'll put down natural log of x like this. So this right here could have been a crazy chen loop question, you know? But, uh, yeah. Good, right? Good. Now, uh, number 76, okay? So I'll erase all this. Number 76, I have a big square root for you guys. Not that big, but you know, whatever. 76. Like Philadelphia 70 sisters, 70 sixers back in the days. I like to watch Alan Iverson playing basketball, all that stuff. 
Now they draw and B, right? All right, it's tough. What can we do? Can't you get? Give it a try. But not not quite. You just have one turn technically, right? But inside. Because I want to get rid of the square root. I want to get rid of the square root on the top. Let me show you how. Technically, this is the square root of 1 minus x over square root of 1 plus x. But let me multiply the top and bottom by inside wise, just the 1 minus x. Okay? 1 minus x, like that. Why? Because you will see on the top, 1 minus x times 1 minus x, 1 minus x squared in the square root, you just get a nice 1 minus x. On the bottom, you have square root of this times that, which is square root of 1 minus x squared, like this. Very nice. This time, when you have this, you can split the fraction. This is the beauty of one turn in the denominator. So you have the integral of 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared, close that, and then you minus the integral of x over square root of 1 minus x squared dx, like that. Very easy. This right here, you can do inverse uh, sine, or you can do trick sine, you'll still end up with inverse sine. So inverse sine x. This right here, we did it earlier, so I'm not going to do it again. Plus square root of 1 minus x squared. If you differentiate this, you get that. So we are done. Very, very nice. Although it looks intimidating, but sometimes just kind of fix the integrand. Do some algebra or so, uh, you can make good things happen, right? Okay? Number 77. I'll put on a question for you guys first. If you haven't seen the question, I have a crazy one x to the x over natural log of x dx for you guys. The answer to this is equal to x to the x over ln x power plus c. Right? Number 78. No, I know. Just kidding. Right? Just kidding. Just kidding. So right here, I'll show you guys why. Again, same speech that earlier. We don't like to work with base x, especially for the power is also like forever, right? We like to work with base e. So this is integral. We can look at this x as e to the ln x power. And then you will see this is x ln x power like this. Check this out. Power times this right here, ln x cancel each other out. So what do we get? It's just the integral of e to the x. Ah, got you, right? dx. Of course, this is just e to the x plus t. But e to the x, yeah, this is actually just e to the x. So they're the same. Okay, so number 78, right? Number 78. Okay. Inverse 10. Why did I put this question for myself? I don't know. Inverse sine of square root of x like this. Let's see. Use up integration by parts. I don't know. Use up. Use up. Okay. Use up. So perhaps I will do use up first. The square root. Let's do the use up. Yeah. Let, let's do use up. Right? U equal the square root of x. And x will be u square. And dx will be 2u, of course. Now take a look. Here, we will have the integral. I have 2u for the dx, so let me just put that down right in front. And then we have the inverse sign of u. And again, here is my 2u du. Here is my dx. Did I make the question harder? I don't know. Again, try integration by parts. So we'll see. I will be differentiating something and then integrating something. Hmm. I differentiate this. Let's see. Differentiating inverse sine of u, plus, on plus minus, and then integrating 2x. Integrating 2x is x squared. Ah, it's kind of weird. Ah. No, sorry. U, 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 u. 2u, u, 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 u. So everybody is in the u world. dx is 2u du, right? 2u du. So we are good. 
And then this right here is 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared, like that, right? So that's the idea. That's pretty good. Oh, this is going to be pretty hard. Whatever. We can do it. So here we go. First part of the answer, ladies and gentlemen, we have that, which is u squared times inverse sine of u, like that. Next, we are going to have an integral, which is this times that. But you know what? Let me just fit in, let me just try to fit everything right here. So let's look at the integral, right? So absurd integral, negative integral u squared over 1 minus u squared in the square root du. <laughs> Tricks up. Maybe, seriously, integration by parts? But we did the integration by parts already. Hmm. I think integration by parts might work again. Let's see. U over this, integration by parts. And then, ah, let's, let's try, let's try, right? So let me just say a plus negative that, okay? And now I'll do integration by parts again. Perhaps this is the f first time I can legitimately use a green pen, okay? I'll differentiate something, integrate something. I am going to be putting down plus or minus first. I want to integrate, okay? I have the square root of 1 minus u squared. I will put down negative u on the top for me, okay? And now I'll be differentiating u like this. Differentiating u, I get 1. Integrating this, I did this so many times already. Ah, I still need to use tricks up for that then. So, uh, might as well just use tricks up right away, right? So yeah. All right. All right, all right, all right, okay. We can do it, don't worry. That, right. So I put on the negative on the outside. Take u to be sine theta, okay? So du will be cosine theta d theta. And now check this out. This is going to be negative integral. I have the negative, right? We're going to be subtracting this later on. And uh, on the top, we are going to get sine square theta over, you put sine square here. One minus sine square is cosine square. Take that, which is going to be cosine theta times cosine theta d theta. Cancel out. This right here, minus integral. Do this, you will need a uh, one half, one minus cosine two theta, like this, okay? And then d theta. <sighs> this right here, uh, negative one half, uh, let's do the integral already, which is going to be parentheses, theta, still minus one half, and then sine of two theta, like this, normal d theta, of course. Yeah, like this, okay? And then this right here is, the same as 2 sine theta, cosine theta, cancel the 2 and the 1 half, distribute the negative 1 half, you get negative 1 half theta. Negative 1 half times that is positive 1 half sine cosine theta. Okay, we finish integration. <sighs> Let's see. Sine is the u, and then cosine, real quick to draw the triangle, you know sine theta is u over 1, so triangle here, theta here, u over 1, adjacent is square root of 1 minus u squared. So this is nice, and then of course theta is the inverse sine of u. Alright, so I cannot know what the answer is. I know the answer, right? So I will just take this to the u world and all that, but perhaps Let's just write everything down right here, okay? U square is x. So I'm just going to kind of cross this out, okay? I'm going to cross this out. But so you guys can see so this right here is x. Inverse sine of u, which is square root of x. Done. Next, 
we have this guy. Okay? And then as I said, I took care of the minus order already. So we have minus one half. Uh, theta is sine inverse u, and that's the square root of x. So we can just put down the inverse sine of square root of x. So they're almost the same, but not. And lastly, we have plus one half sine theta is u, which is square root of x. So we put on square root of x right here. Cosine theta is this, right? This over that, so just this. And u squared is x, so it's just that, which is square root of 1 minus x. Like that, when we're done. Put a plus c. Let's, let's make it this plus a big c, huh? bigger c, like that. So this right here is our answer. <laughs> yes, I came up with all these questions, and I am doing them all. Wow, a lot of things going on. I want to go home before 9 o'clock. I don't know. We'll see. Wow. this back take a little uh, break let me just put this back in order to get this ready and get the markers ready all that okay so let's see uh, that was uh, number 79 so let me just write this down right here for you guys number 79 Right? So, hmm. Right, to be honest, I think I did this question already. I have a duplicated 179. Uh, I think that was the one that we did earlier uh, from 31. Yeah, it's like a couple hours ago. So I'm going to fix the file. And in the meantime, I will come with something. Uh, let's see. Alright, so let's do this one. Integral and uh, hmm, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, why don't we just do this one? I actually have a follow up PD on this, and then originally I didn't put this one uh, on one of the 100 questions, but um, I have. A follow-up video for this okay I will show you guys how not to integrate this guy because I gave up a test early like recently and I saw so many different ways to answer this wrong of course so the way to integrate this is you have to use integration by parts so I put on the B and an I so this right here can be pretty easy if you set it up the right way you have to differentiate this and notice this is the inverse tangent X and then integrate one Integrate this, you get 1 over 1 plus x squared, and then, I mean, differentiate this, you get 1 over 1 plus x squared. Integrating 1, you get x. So, here is the deal. This times that is the uh, first part of the answer, so you have x times inverse tangent of x. And then, this right here. All right? So again, this is still an integral, okay? This is still an integral. And, you let u equal to 1 plus x squared. So what you end up with is minus 1 half abs uh, natural log and with 1 plus x squared inside. You don't need the absolute value. This right here is it. This is the right way to integrate it. It can be really easy, but uh, I will show you guys uh, in a follow-up video, in, in a follow-up video, like how people do this incorrectly. Alright, so, yeah. Alright, now, 
Number 80. 80% done. 80% done. I'm worried about I have four hours. I should have another hour or so to, to do this. In terms of the memory, solve the memory, uh, the computer. So we'll see. Number 18. Integrating from zero to five. F of x. Oh my god, what's f of x? Don't worry, I'm telling you guys that f of x is a piecewise functional. So you maybe you have to worry. Yeah. This right here, I make it to be 10. And uh, 3x squared minus 2 is 10 if x is less than or equal to 2. And this is if x is greater than 2. So this is how you are going to deal with the integral of a piecewise function. You are going to just separate them, because especially when you have um, the equations right here and right here, pay attention to the interval, that's all. So it's not that bad. First, you are going to look at this and integrate it from 0 to 2, because it says so. And for that, f right here will be 10, and then dx. Okay? And then you are going to add the other part, which is from, well, from 2 to 5, from 2 to 5, and then you have to do this, which is 3x squared minus 2, like that, and then the dx. That's pretty much the idea. So this right here, it's actually pretty easy because it's just 10, always 10, and you find the area under that curve from 0 to 2. So you end up with 20. Okay? You end up with 20. This right here, let's take a look right here real quick. You have to integrate it, which is x cubed, right? Integrate it, you get x cubed. And then minus 2x, just like that. And you are going to plug in, plug in numbers. So just do the dirty work, that's all. All right, so let's do this in our head. 5 into there, you get 5 to the third power, which is 125. And then minus 10, this is the first part. And then you are going to subtract, the second part is 8 minus um, 4, like this, not bad. So in another word, this is 115 minus this is 4. So altogether, you have 1, 1, 1. Cool, huh? Double check. Yes, it's correct. So you're going to be adding 1, 1, 1 for it. So it's not that bad. It's much better than some crazy function. This is not absolute for your three. This is 131. All right? So that's how you handle piecewise function in an integral. Right? Continue, continue, continue. An interesting one right here. Number 81. We are integrating sine of 1 over x over x. Here's the deal. If it's just x, can I do? If it's x squared, it's easy. But I want to integrate with x cubed on the bottom, right? You guys can see that, x q on the bottom, right? So here is the deal. Let's see. Hmm. All right, integration by parts. Because as I said, if you have a two right here, you can do it by yourself, which is actually pretty easy. So I will just try to break them apart, break them apart, okay? Try to break them apart. First, actually, yeah, I think I should just do it right here. I will integrate this sine with 1 over x inside over x squared in the denominator, okay? And then I will differentiate 1 over x like that, all right? Here is the deal. You let u equal to this, and you have to get negative. Be careful with it. And then, you can change that to the u world. You are just integrating negative sine u, which will give you positive cosine u. So you end up with cosine of 1 over x. Again, if you differentiate this, this is going to give you sine. The inside stays the same. But the derivative of cosine is negative, And then the negative, another negative will be coming from the derivative of 1 over x. This is good. Now, differentiate this, you get negative 1 over x squared. Very nice. I set up this right here, okay? So, I will see. The first part of the answer is this times that, which I will just put down. 
cosine of 1 over x over x like that real cool huh then we will have to take care of this integral right we'll have to take care of this integral dx and i'll just put on the result for you guys right i cannot mess up in terms of uh yeah whatever do another u sub let u equal to this and you get that back which is very good let's see the integral of cosine is positive sine and then the input stays the same well let's see if it's positive or negative actually i don't need to write it down below i can actually fit in here positive sine of 1 over x when i differentiate this i get cosine input stays the same differentiating that i get differentiated inside because of chandu i get this so it should have been a minus so let me just write this down minus sine with 1 over x inside and we are done not bad huh so put a plus c be happy good number 82 this is a uh, let's see 82 integral of x minus 1 over x to the fourth power minus 1 we can cancel something out so it's not that bad don't worry right here whew, right here this is like saying x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x squared plus 1 and then cancel this out so you can see that this right here we can actually just do the uh, partial fractions again so let me just make this note right here for you guys so for the partial fraction I need 1 over x plus 1 times x squared plus 1 and I will have to set this up to be a over uh, x plus 1 and then plus this is going to be an irreducible quadratic so I will need bx plus c like that okay what is a I need to plug in negative 1 here so you get 1 half this is nice thank god now use 0 if I get 0 if plugging 0 into all the x I get 1 okay I'll say use x equals 0 then I get 1 and this is going to be 1 half this is 0 so I have c over 2 am I right c over no c over 1 which is just of course c then c will be 1 half yeah that's very good very good very good now use x equals positive 1 here you get 2 2 so it's 4 okay so you get 1 over 4 on the bottom and then if you're plugging 1 in here you get 1 over 2 over 2 so it's 1 over 4 again thank god it will be 0 and then plus b times 1 is b over 2 and then plus 1 over 2 over 2 so it's 1 over 4 like that check this out this is 0 and I need b to be negative 1 half am I right if I have negative 1 half this will be 0 as well and everybody will be uh, 0 yeah good so here is the deal I will have to integrate this guy as first part which is 1 half x 1 half over x minus 1 half over x plus 1 next it's the b and then uh, I will put this down right here I'll close the integral okay b is negative 1 half so let me write it down in the front negative 1 half and then I have the integral sign with the x on the top over x squared plus 1 close that okay and then c is 1 half so I put on plus and we have the 1 half and then we have the x squared plus 1 1 over x squared plus 1 dx like this okay. take a look 
Yes. So, of course, we can just now integrate term by term. It's not that bad. Check this out. Here is the deal. Right here, the first one is going to give us one half. One half, still one half here. So I'll just put this down in black. Why not? One half, natural log of absolute value of x plus one. Next, do we care about deal? When you do this, you have the extra factor of 1 over 2. So you multiply by that, you end up with negative 1 over 4. So I will actually make this in blue. Okay? Because when you have to put 2 and then 2 pretty much, and then the derivative is 2x. And then you have ln parentheses x squared plus 1. Here, you get inverse tangent of x. We're all done. Put a plus C. Like that. Done. Partial fractions sometimes aren't that bad. So that is the deal. Right? That is the deal. <sighs> right. I would really have to see if there's anybody else who would like to do like 100 uh, integrals in one take, right? In one take, not not like just like over several takes. I want to see how many people would like to do that. I don't know, man. <laughs> now, 83, almost done, almost done. This is like when I run marathons and I reach like the 21st mile, right? mile 21. So almost done, almost done. And then I start to get emotional, but it's still tough because my body is tired and uh, I still have like five more miles to go. All those things. Anyway, we have this right here. Huh. Do you guys recognize where you can possibly end up with this kind of integral? If so, please comment down below and let me know what situation you have to deal uh, with this integral. But here, now I wait for your comments though. I will just show you guys how to integrate this. This is the integral square root. One is still one, but this part, you are going to multiply it out. And if you do that, you get plus x squared and minus two times x times this. X and x cancel. Two and four, you have the one half right here. It's not negative. And then you have to square that, which is plus one over 16x squared, like that, right? And then you have the dx, like this. And this is actually not that bad, it's actually kind of cool. Because you see that we have the 1 and negative 1 half. Of course, that will be positive 1 half. And you end up with the integral of the square root. Inside, you have x squared plus 1 half instead. Plus 1 half instead. And then you have plus 1 over 16x squared, and then you have the dx. You have three crazy things inside of the square root, but let me tell you, this is a perfect square, just like that. But instead of the minus, you have plus. So here's the deal. This is the integral square root. Inside here, if you factor it or whatever, you end up with x plus 1 over 4x, and then square dx. Again, we're just focusing on the integration, so you can cancel this out. So you are just integrating x plus 1 over 4x, like that. Very nice. Huh, we're not done yet, I know. But this is easy. 1 half x squared plus 1 over 4 natural log absolute value of x, like that. <sighs> okay. All right, number 84. Number 84, we have the integral of e to the tangent x over 1 minus sine squared x dx. This right here is not bad at all, because we have seen this a lot. What's this? Yes, it's just cosine squared. And when you have cosine squared in the denominator, what's that? Yes, that's just secant squared. So in another word, you can just say this is the integral of secant squared x, and then you have e to the tangent x dx. 
And look, the derivative tangent x is that. So you know the answer is just e to the tangent x. Yeah? And you got that for plus c. Very nice. Haha. <laughs> OK. Last page. Last page. Number 85. OK? So, number 85. The integral of the inverse tangent again, but this time divided by x dx. All right, so let me show you guys how to do it. I see x and x, so let's cancel this out. So this is just the integral of tangent like this, and then we know the answer is just 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, done. Just, just kidding. Don't be mad at me. It was just a joke. Integral tangent negative 1 right here, x over x. Of course, we cannot do that. <laughs> Integration by parts. Right? Uh, let me put this down on the side. D and then the I. I am going to integrate this 1 over x, and I'll differentiate inverse tangent of x. When I do that, I get 1 over 1 plus x squared. When I integrate this, what do I get? Hold on. Wait, I copied it wrong. I copied it wrong. No, 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 no. I copied this question wrong. It should be 1 over x squared. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be making that joke with you guys. I thought I'd get like, all mixed up. Anyway, here we go. When we integrate this, you get negative 1 over x. Okay? <laughs> all right. So here we go. This times this, the first part of the answer. And we get. Let me just put on negative inverse tangent of x over x. Again, do not cancel the x. Seriously, don't do that. And then, of course, here we are going to do this part again. This part. And notice, we have, pos we have positive from here. It's a positive integral because we have negative times negative, okay? So let's just focus on the integral of, let's see if I can, I don't know. Let me see. I'm going to just do it right here. I should be able to. Integral, and it's positive, okay? It's positive, so... And uh, we have to do the 1 over x times 1 plus x squared dx, like this. It's not that bad, actually. You don't need to do partial fractions for this. You don't have to do partial fractions for this. Because right here, you can factor out x squared again. So, you will see this right here. It's the integral of 1 over x times, let's factor the x squared. And with that said, you end up with x to the negative 2 plus 1. Well, well, this right here is x to the third power in the denominator. Namely, you get the integral of x to the negative 3 on the top over x negative 2 plus 1 dx. Very good, isn't it? Well, the bottom, uh, the derivative of the bottom is almost the same as top. The derivative of x squared, the derivative of x to the negative 2 is negative 2x to the negative third power, so I will have to divide it by that. So you end up nicely equal to 1 over negative 1 over 2 ln, and this is actually always positive, so I put parentheses, x squared plus 1. That's it. This was supposed to be positive. Well, this times this was positive, but the result is negative. So in the end, you are going to minus 1. Oh, by the way, it's negative. Uh, negative, negative exponent, okay? Minus 1 over 2 ln parentheses x negative 2 plus 1. Like that, right? Plus c. <laughs> Okay, and then box the answer. Sorry, this is not box. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Okay, that's it. All right, I will fit in another one. Number 86. All right, so this right here is when you have just x squared in the denominator. But let's take a look. What if you have the integral of tangent the inverse over 1 plus x squared instead? Hmm, how can we do it? Integration by parts again. No, you don't have to, because what's the derivative of inverse tangent? 
Yes, it's just 1 over 1 plus x squared, and you have that right here. Earlier, we didn't have the 1 plus, so that's why it was slightly more work, but this right here, it's nicely equal to 1 half, you take u to be this, parentheses, inverse tangent of x to the second power, and you are done right here. Okay? So this right here should be a notation for it, and if you want to make it clear, you can also write it as arc tangent, but please never write uh, tangent with a negative 2. Don't. Seriously, don't. If you put negative 2 right here, don't. I have a video on that. Just, just don't. Just don't. Don't, don't, don't. Don't. Seriously. I, I'm making this video, um, you know, just, just to... No, just don't. Anyway, this is all right here, right? So, continue. Alright, so again, I'm doing this for loss, and you know, I wish him the best. Um, battling cancer, and, and I want to say I like my, I love my girlfriend so much, and uh, you know, subscribe um, to the people who I recommend you guys. Like for example, my biggest little fan, Unhan, and Fomatica, math genius, young mathematician in the making, and of course the happiest mathematician, Dr. Payan, and of course Max, and um, a lot of more people. <sighs> if I don't. And if I didn't mention your name, I'm sorry, okay? It's tiring. Anyway, number 87. Subscribe to PewDiePie, why not? Integral ln x square dx. <sighs> what do we do? Drink some tea or something. <sighs> All right. You can do a use up, I think, but let's just begin by doing um, integration by parts. This time, though, I will actually do the DM method two separate times. You guys will see what I mean by that. I will first differentiate the whole thing, ln x squared like this. And I know from experience, I know this is not going to be enough space. So I will put this down right here. Actually, no, I will put it over D and then the. Hold on, sorry. Let me just make sure I have enough space. D and then the I. I will integrate 1, differentiate ln x, square plus minus. Here we go. Integrating 1, nice. Differentiating this, 2 ln x, and then don't forget the chain do, multiply by 1 of x. Still nice. So first thing first, you have to do this times that. So you end up with x times this, which is x times parentheses, ln x squared. Good. Very, very good. And technically, you will have to look at this. And again, this is an integral again, right? But when you multiply this and that, the x cancel. And you have to look at the integral. So let me just write down minus um, integral 2 ln x dx. That's what we have to do, right? Let me, let me put it down over there. Why not? Uh, to minus integral 2 ln x dx. And we have to integrate ln x. So you have to use the dm method again, the technical d, right? Do it twice, all that. You cannot continue, you just kind of just do it again, like that. I will be differentiating, why not? Let's do 2 ln x and then integrate 1. And when you differentiate ln x, you get, well, first of all, the plus minus is uh, alternating. Right here, 2 of x. And then if you integrate this, you get x, right? So, again, this times this will be the first part of the answer to that blue integral. And then, of course, you are going to, it's a blue mark. I mean, a green marker. And you have to integrate 2, pretty much. Let's see. You have 2x ln x. And then you have to minus the integral of 2 dx. In another word, 2x ln x minus 2x. And then don't forget, this right here is technically in the f inside of this integral right here, right? So you have to have the negative in front. So the final answer should be, let me write it down right here for you guys, x times ln x squared, negative times that. So you have negative 
and then you have the 2x ln x and then negative times negative we get plus 2x and we are done put a plus c and be happy okay continue number 88 in fact if you know uh, the integral of ln x is just ln x x ln x uh, minus x and then you distribute negative 2 that's fine too but technically you should do the diameter again but like here we start all right number 88 we still have some hard questions okay so keep watching integral square root of x squared plus 4 over x squared dx how do we do this? Trick stop, right? Trick stop or trick stop. However, right here, take x to be tangent theta, and dx will be secant square theta d theta. And hope for the best. Actually, sorry, my bad. It's a plus four. Oh um, my god. Who put a plus four? Yes, it was me. <laughs> Alright, let's do this in our head. Check this out. You put the two tangent theta in here, you square that, you can factor the four, and then instead of the square root, you get two, okay? You get a two. And then you get tangent square theta plus one. That will be secant uh, square. Well, secant, it will be secant square, but in the square root, so you get secant to the first power, so secant theta. Over, you have to be careful right here, you have the little two, you have to square that, so you end up with four, tangent square theta and then you also have to have this for dx which is 2 secant square theta d theta and now something's pretty good happening 2 2 2 they all cancel out that's good and then unfortunately we have secant cube oh god let's see all right so I will, I will do this integral so a secant cube which is the same as saying 1 over cosine cube. Am I right? 1 over cosine cube. Tangent square in the denominator is the same as uh, cotangent uh, square. And we can look at that as cosine square x over sine square x, like that. And we have the no. I am still in the theta world. Oh my god, I'm sorry. This is with the theta, 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 d, theta, like this. And uh, I am like, let's see, this right here, cancel out. And now I have that. 1 over cosine theta times sine squared theta is equal to this. Cosine is in the wrong place. Oh my god. Let's see how we can deal with this. Did yeah, I do anything wrong so far? I don't think so. But we just have to deal with this, right? So I don't make sure that we are doing this legitimately. If you notice, you notice. Yes, we can write the one as sine square plus cosine square. This time, let's introduce blue marker. This is prettier, this one. Look at that, sine square plus cosine square. And we are still in the theta world, so let's put that down, okay? And then, this is integral to this right here. Well, split the fractions. Cosine to the first power, theta, sine to the second power, theta, okay? This one, cosine, theta, sine, square, theta, d, theta, like this. People keep want me. People keep wanting me to put the parentheses, but it's up to you, man. That's easy. That's doable. Now for this one. That's also just as easy. Very good. So we will see. The first one is just the integral of uh, secant theta, which we will get ln absolute value secant theta plus tangent theta. Okay. For the second one, okay, um, you have cosine to the first power, so you are going to do some use up. 
then u equal to this. And then you pretty much have to integrate 1 over u squared, which you will get negative 1 over u. Okay? But u is sine theta, so you have 1 over sine theta like this. So if you differentiate this guy, you will end up with that guy. This is good. And of course, 1 over sine theta is just cosecant. C S D theta. Wow, everybody is here, huh? <laughs> Almost. Yeah, let's see. I have a uh, sine. Yes, I have cosine. I have a. Uh, oh, I don't have cotangent. I, I could, but like I didn't have it. But anyway. Anyway, so here is the deal. Right here, we know. Let me put this down here for you guys. We know tangent theta. It's equal to x over 2. So that means we can draw a right triangle here. And uh, let's see. I want to write it down below. So I will say we know tangent theta is x over 2. And uh, we can draw a right triangle. This right here is theta. And then tangent is x over 2. And the hypotenuse is this. Of course, it's going to be square root of this square plus that square, x squared plus 4. Now we are in business. This right here, natural log, absolute value, secant this over that, which is the square root of x squared plus 4 over 2. Tangent this over that, so we can put down plus x over 2. In fact, everybody, the inside will be positive, because this is bigger than that, so you don't need the absolute value. And then minus uh, cosecant theta is uh, this over that. Yeah, so it's a uh, square root of x squared plus 4 over x, like this. Wow, that was a tough one. And here's the deal. Yes, you can put down plus c1. Okay, this is good. If you want to just call it for the day, that's fine. Again, ln of the top minus ln2 right, for the bottom. So if you want, you can write it down as natural log parentheses square root of x squared plus 4 plus x, and then minus this guy x squared plus 4 over x, and then put down plus c2. I'll box this. If you use Wolfram alpha, I think they will give you this kind of answer, or the answer, back, or the answer in the back of your textbooks. Yeah, so that will be it. OK, 12 more. OK. Number 89, right? I'm going to go fast. Integral square root of x plus 4 over x. <laughs> over the half square square this time, I don't have the first power. I think this is going to be good. Okay, it's going to be better. How do we do it? Let's do it yourself, okay? Let u equal the square root, square root of x plus 4. And I want to solve for x, so let me just square both sides and minus 1 both sides. In another word, I get u squared minus 4 equals x dx will be just 2u du. Very nice. Now take this to the u world. This is the integral. On the top is u. On the bottom, x is u squared minus 4. And then dx is 2u du. OK? And then uh, let's see. You get integral of 2u squared, this time time over u squared minus 4 du. Yes, we have to do long diffusion this time. Uh, so if you would like, you can just put it down on the side real quick. Let's put on 2u squared here, and then we do the u squared minus 4 outside. You need a 2. 2 times this is 2u squared minus 8. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, and then this is going to be past the 8, right? So here's the deal. You have to integrate 2. Okay, 2 is the number by itself, and then plus 8 over u squared minus 4. And to do that, let's do partial fraction for this one. So u minus 2, u plus 2. Okay? And then, of course, we will have the du right there. Well, well, well. This right here is the integral of 2 plus, okay, let's see, u minus 2 plus something with u plus 2. Du. Here is the deal. I will use my left hand or my right hand. Cover this up. I need to plug in 2, 2 in here. That's 4. 
8 divided by 4 is 2. And cover this up, plug in negative 2 here, and you get negative 2. It's not that bad. So here is going to be, we're still in the u world though, so 2u and then plus 2 natural log of absolute value u minus 2, and then minus 2 ln absolute value of u plus 2. Finally, going back to the x world, so this right here, this right here, and this right here, they all have to be changed. It. So I will say 2 square root of x plus 4. And perhaps let's just put this together, yeah? Save some space. Plus 2 together and a natural log. And then the top is going to be this, right? u minus 2, which is this, which is square root of x plus 4 minus 2 over this, which is square root of x plus 4 plus 2, like that. Very nice. And the truth is, when you have square root, this is going to be greater than or equal to 2. And uh, you're not going to have 0, so don't worry. So just no negative. Parentheses is enough. And plus uh, fish. OK? Yeah, done. Very good, very good. Steve, you are doing good. Steve, this is good. Actually, depends how you count. 11 more questions. Number 90! Oh my god! This right here. Integral 0 to pi over 2. Right? Integral from 0 to pi over 2. Yes, you guys can see now. Sine to the third power x over sine to the third power x plus cosine to the third power x dx. You serious? Somebody's for these questions right here, this is actually very easy. <sighs> the answer to this is pi over 4. See this question all the time. You can do this by experience. This, this, that, if they are the same, if it goes from 0 to pi over 2. This is a famous question. You can just put down the answer being pi over 4. Pi over 4. I don't remember what I said. Put down pi over 4 and then walk away. Detail explanation will be in the description, but the idea is that, in fact, if you have cosine to a third power x on the top, over the same denominator, they have the same value. This integral and that integral are equivalent. You can add them up, and you can reduce the, um, the integral inside, the integral, to be just 1. And when you add them up, you have 2 of them, and if you integrate this with 1 inside from 0 to pi over 2, you end up with pi over 2 for the area. But it's two of them, so each area has pi over four area. Done. <sighs> ah, number 91. <laughs> I love this one. Okay, I love this one. Number this one. X over one plus x to the fourth power. So nice. Why? Okay. I wish to have the x squared somewhere. So the derivative x squared is 2x. You can get rid of the x right here, right? Well, I produce the x squared myself by looking at the x to the 4 as x squared, squared. How's that? Cool, huh? Right here, you let u equal to this. And of course, in 2x, so you can put on 2 right here, divided by 2. So you have the answer as 1 half. Again, this is going to be the inverse tangent form if you let u equal to this, okay? And you get uh, inverse tangent of x squared. Done. Dun 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 92 92 92 integral of e to the square root of x dx classic one uh you can do u sub first and then do integration by parts so we will u equals square root of x x is equal to u square dx is equal to 2u du and you see this is going to be integral e to the u and then dx is 2u du, so you can put down 2u here, du here, and then you proceed with integration by parts. 
D and then the I, and then you are going to you are going to differentiate to U, and you are going to integrate e to the U plus minus plus because this will be two, this will be zero, and then e to the U is always e to the U. Very nice. Answer hello, right? So the answer is, ladies and gentlemen, two U times that, and do we know what U is? Yes, we do. U is square root of x. So put on that the square root of x. Put on the square root of x, and then e to the square root of x. Next, you do this times that. So you have minus two e to the square root of x, and you are done. Put a plus c. Dun 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 dun. dun. <sighs> okay, number ninety three. Oh, this is my favorite as well. One over cos d can cube x dx. Yes, this is just nicely equal to the integral of sine to the third power x dx. And yes, one of this is one of my old videos. It has over a lot of views. I don't remember how many. But the way to do it is you look at this, look at this as sine square x times sine x dx. Look at this as what? This right here as 1 minus cosine square x. Very, very good. And then you have the sine x dx. And then you take a little u sub right here, okay? You just let u equal to cosine. But, uh, well, since I, I have this one, let's that's, that's do this one um, more legit. Cosine x du is equal to negative sine x dx. So, another integral sign, this right here, you should have the negative right here, okay? I have the negative right here already. And then, that's the integral of 1 minus u squared, and then this with the negative in the front, we have the du, okay? So we have the du. You can just divide the negative on both sides. That's another thing. So negative du is this. Anyway, negative parentheses integrate out is u minus 1 over 3, u to the third power, and u is cosine. So distribute, in fact, this should go first. So I say 1 third cosine to the third power x. And then minus cosine x, like that, plus c, done. Eh? Yeah, to be honest, I actually don't know how many people will actually be watching this video and all that, but I think it's fun. I can run marathon. I can do integration marathon. So, of course, you can try to beat me. Eh? Try to beat me. But don't beat me just by one, okay? Seriously, no, no. Beat me at least by 10 or five, at least. And the deal is, if you beat me, I will try to beat you back. Seriously, that's not going to be healthy. So let's just, well, let's just don't do that. <laughs> anyway, 90 something. Uh, question 94. Oh my God, this is like mile 24 uh, in my mirror zone, okay? Hello guys from my um, uh, cell phone. Uh, my iPhone, let's see. Inverse sine, okay, integral of inverse sine x over square root of one minus x square dx. It's easy or hard? Very easy. This is just going to be one half parentheses with inverse sine x inside square, and then we're done. I almost wanted to put down dx. Because the derivative of inverse sine x is precisely 1 over uh, square root of 1 minus x squared. So if you differentiate that, you'll get that. Very good. 95. Okay, 95. Okay, integral square root of 1 plus sine 2x. Seriously? Wait. I put on 2. I put on sine? I, I don't know if I should do sine. Yes, we can. Yes, if this is the cosine 2x right here, it's pretty easy. We did that earlier. But if you have sine, it's just as easy. Let me show you how. First of all, I'll prove to you guys the following, okay? Look at 1. And today, 1 is pretty special. We'll look at 1 as sine squared plus cosine squared. So this right here, it's going to be sine squared x and then plus cosine squared x. So we're OK. And uh, this guy. 
plus 2 sine x cosine x. What's this? Yes, it's a perfect square. Very, very nice. This right here, we have the integral square root. Inside here, we end up with sine x plus cosine x squared dx. Have we seen this earlier? Yes, we have. Okay, so cancel them out. So integrating sine and cosine, the integral of sine is negative cosine x, and integral of cosine is positive sine x, and then we are done. Plus plus z, this is it. Number 96. Yes, I want to finish uh, happy, so I'll put on number 96 like this. Integral of the fourth root of x. Okay, don't be surprised that some people still got it wrong, okay? But anyway, let's see. Almost always, we treat radicals as fraction exponents, so this is x to the 1 over 4th power dx. And what do we do? Yes, we add 1 to the power, which is 5 over 4. You divide it by that power, which is 4 over 5. And you end up with... 4 over 5, and now just keep this as the fourth root of x to the 5, like this. And if you would like, you can take out x out, 4 over 5x, and then the fourth root of x, like that, plus d. <sighs> okay, 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 okay. One of my, one of the one that really got me famous, uh, got me a lot of subscribers on YouTube, okay? So number 97. Oh my god. Almost done, almost done. How many? 26 gig. Yes, I, I actually, right now it's 26 gig, okay? Um, I actually save, I, I clean up about like 47 gig to, to record this, so I have plenty of space. But it's 5 hours and 30 minutes, oh my god. I can finish a marathon already, seriously, oh my god. <sighs> Number 97. Integral 1 over 1 plus e to the x dx. The way you do this is that you ask yourself, wouldn't it be nice? Okay, you start by asking yourself, wouldn't it be nice if the top is also 1 plus e to the x? That would be so nice, isn't it? Because that would be zero. But of course, if you just do that, you are going to change the whole thing. That's cheating, no. But it's okay, you can just minus e to the x and then, haha, everybody happy. And then you will see this is just going to be the integral. This right here is just 1. Preferably, let's close that and then minus the integral e to the x over 1 plus e to the x dx. Very good. This right here is just x minus this right here. Okay, the derivative at the bottom is precisely the top. So we get natural log with the denominator, which is uh, 1 over, which is 1 plus e to the x. And by the way, have I told you guys in Chinese, 1 is e and e is also e. By the way, don't ask me to say E in Chinese. This is an English alphabet. You cannot say English word in Chinese. And some people say, no, black pen, red pen, you say that every single time. But you know, whatever, man. That's it. <sighs> in fact, you have other ways to do it. You can also multiply the time bounded by e to the negative x, but I'll leave that to you guys. Number 98. So I still have a hard one right here. Semi-hard one, okay? Let's see like this. Square root of 1 plus e to the x. God. Ah, let's see. Do a u sub. I will say do u equal the square root 1 plus e to the x. And then let's see. Let's see. Uh, square both sides. And then naturally, let me show you guys this. Let's differentiate both sides. du is equal to 1 over, actually, 1 over 2 square root of 1 plus e to the x. And then don't forget the chen lu. Use the chen lu. E to the x. Shout out to Dr. Pi Yam. So of this, and then you know that, let me just write it down right here. dx is equal to, put this on the top, 2 square root of 1 plus e to the x over e to the x du. All right, now take this to the u world. This is going to be integral of u times dx is all that, which is, Okay, take a look. This guy is the same as u, okay? So we have 2u on the top. And then e to the x is what though? Well, don't worry. Take a look right here. Square both sides, minus 1 both sides, e to the x is equal to u squared minus 1. So that will be for this. So I'll put that down over e 
over u square minus 1. u square minus 1, right? And then, uh, of course, we have the du. So this is good. This is very good. OK? So this right here is what we have. And now, of course, you're looking at this integral and it's that trouble. Let's see. Everything's OK. Yeah, everything's OK. It's similar to one of the questions we did earlier. It's just minus though. Anyway, 2u square over u square minus 1 du. Long division. And right, let's put it down right here. Long division. 2u square u square minus 1. You need a 2. 2 times this is 2u square minus 2 minus minus minus. So you get positive 2 right here. So what does this mean? That means we have to integrate. Let me put it down right here. We have to integrate 2 and uh, plus 2 over u squared minus 1, which is u minus 1 times u plus 1. Yes? Partial fraction. Okay. Let me just, let me just put this right here and then put this right here. So this is the integral of 2 plus something over u minus 1 plus something over u plus 1 du like this. I need to plug in 1. 2 over 2 is 1. Nice. I need to plug in negative 1. So it's 2 over negative 2 is negative 1. Nice. So uh, we will have the integral of this. In the u world, we get 2u, and then this is going to be plus ln absolute value of u minus 1, and then minus ln absolute value of u plus 1. Right? And then u, 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 got so many use is this guy. So I will just pull everybody back. I was already done here. This is going to be 2u, which is that square root of 1 plus e to the x. This and that can be combined into just one single logarithm. And then we have ln absolute value. And then u minus 1, u is this. Well, I don't think we need absolute value, do we? 1 plus e to the x. Minus 1. No, this right here is at least 1 for sure. Uh, yeah, well, this right here is at least 1, so it's good. So it's always positive. Likewise, the bottom, you have this guy. Plus 1, right? Done. Plus c. Cool. This is it. How many more? Two more, two more. No, I like three more. Ninety-nine. Well, two more, two more, two more. <laughs> All right. So hopefully, Unhan, you're watching this, okay? And if there's anybody who is going to break my record, I hope it's you, okay? I hope you, it's, it's you. And then, in fact, and Unhan is the only person, of course, besides my girlfriend, um, that I told about the uh, 100 integrals in one take. I told Dr. Paya I was going to do something really crazy, but like he didn't know where he was, and nobody else knew neither. <laughs> oh my god. Number 99. This is like you reach the mile 26 in your marathon, but you have uh, 0.2 more miles, okay? 0.2, and then all that. Here we go integral square root of tangent x. No, I'm not going to do this, OK? I will do the, <laughs> this version with the sign of 2x in the denominator. This is also pretty fun, OK? This is also pretty fun, but let me write it down better for you guys. Integral square root of tangent x over sine of 2x like this, dx. What do we do? Do you stop, right? Let u equal um, square root of tangent x square root of tangent x. And then, let's see. Hmm. OK, let's take a look. I am going to differentiate both sides. So du will be, let me put it down. Yeah, I don't want to get the inverse. I don't think I want to do that. Yeah, let's see. I'll just deal with this. du equals 1 over, well, let's not do the 1, because you know there will be something on top. 2 over, two, and 1 over square root of, 2 over square root of, 
tangent x like this, right? The root of the Don't forget the chendu, use the chendu. The root of this is secant square x dx. Okay? And now we'll see. On the top, this is the u. That's good. On the bottom, let's use the double angle identity for uh, sine of 2x, which is 2 sine x cosine x. dx, well, do the reciprocal on both sides. So you will multiply this by 2, and then you have the square root of tangent x, and of course, that's the same as u. So you are going to look at this as your u, so put on u, and I'm going to get a, yeah, you know what I mean, over secant square x du, okay? So far, so good. Okay, hmm. Okay, let's see. Let use this blue. Two and two cancel. At least we are making progress. U square on the top, sure. Integral. On the top, we have U square on the top over. This is sine x. This is cosine x. You're like, duh, I know. And then you have this over cos. You have this over. Uh, secant, so I can put that down as cosine square x right here on the top, and then over 1, and then still have the du, right? So that's the deal. And then the deal is that you can cancel this out and check this out. If you look at, we only have the cosine x left, and we can pair up with the sine x. They are still in terms of x in the u world, they are not good, but they can be paired up as the cotangent. Or if you would like, you can bring this down as well. So it depends on how you want to look at. So here's the deal. This is going to be the integral. U square is still u square, okay? And then this over that is cotangent. Let me just put on cotangent for this. I haven't seen cotangent for a while, so let's put on cotangent. And then we are in the u world. So we still have some trouble because of the x. It's not allowed in the u world. Let's see. Right here, you know tangent x is just u square, square both sides, that's good. And if you do the reciprocal on both sides, 1 over tangent x is just 1 over u square, namely cotangent for that. Good. So you will see, this right here, it's actually just the integral of u square times cotangent x is just nicely equal to 1 over u square du. So what exactly are we integrating? Yes, it's just 1 in the u world integrating 1 in the u world, we get u. And what is u? u is square root of tangent x. <laughs> wow, look at that, plus c. Cool, huh? Yeah, the answer is so, 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 so clean. Finally! Ah! ah. The integral of the integral from 0 2 pi over 2, 1 over 1 plus sine x dx. In the reason why I put this down for the last one is because I think this was one of the first integral, one of the first few integrals, maybe the first one, okay? That I did, and I'm pretty sure this was the first one that got me the 10,000 view, the first 10,000 view on YouTube. So, of course, I'm going to finish this legitimately. Technically, the one I did was without the limits of integration, but don't worry, I'll put it back. The way I did it was I multiplied the top and bottom by the conjugate, okay? If it's cosine, you can do something else nicely, but let me just show you guys what I did right here. So, here's the deal. Now, I have this time stuff, which is just cosine square x dx, and now on top is just 1 minus sine x. And check this out. This right here is uh, secant square, so we are integrating secant square x. This and that, we have to minus. Sine over cosine is secant. No, sin, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Too excited. Sine over cosine to the first power is tangent. But we have another cosine in the denominator, so it's secant x, like that. And of course, that's close the integral, and people want me to put parentheses. And then, integrating, we get tangent, 
minus secant x. That's it, right? Cool. But as I told you, I'm going to put on limit. As I said, I will give you guys some definite integrals. So don't forget you have 0 to pi over 2. 0 to pi over 2, OK? So technically, I will have to look at this and then plug in 0 to pi over 2. <sighs> but the problem here is that when you plug in pi over 2 into here, tangent of pi over 2 is not defined. No, no. But does that mean this integral originally it's not good in the first place. Well, the truth is 1 over 1 plus sine x, it's good. It's continuous. You can put pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1, so you just have 1 half. That's good. The trouble is, we multiply top and bottom by this. When x is pi over 2, you have 1 minus sine of pi over 2 in another one, one minus 1, which is 0. You multiply 0, and 0 over 0. It helped us to integrate it, but if you want to evaluate this, it's not that good yet. So the way to fix this is that we have to undo that. So let me show you. Uh, tangent is cosine x over sine. No. I'm sorry. It's, it's late. It's tiring. Sine x over cosine x, and then minus secant 1 over cosine x. Does this look familiar? This is sine x minus 1 over cosine x. Yes. I will pretty much do that again. That's pretty much the idea. So what we are going to do is let's go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by sine x minus 1 and then sine x minus 1. And as you can see, here you end up with cosine x times, all right, here's the deal. On the top here, okay, on the top here, you end up with negative, okay, because this is the different order. Earlier, if it's 1 minus sine squared, it's positive cosine squared. But this is going to give you negative cosine squared x, like that, OK? So you put that down, negative cosine squared, like that. Right? So that's the, for that. But in the meantime, why don't we just change the order right here as well? Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. This should have been a plus 1. I'm sorry. Let me do it again. Take this times the conjugate. Take that times the conjugate. So you have negative cosine squared x on top. This is still good, OK? Over cosine x times this. So I will just put that down right here, which I can write this as 1 plus sine x. Doesn't matter, right? And then, of course, here we can cancel things out. Cancel, cancel. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> cancel. So we end up with the integral, no, not integral, we finish integral with negative cosine x over 1 plus sine x. What are we trying to do? The, answer, the idea is that, look at, if you want to talk about the indefinite integral, okay, you could end up right here, but it may not help sometimes if you have limits of integration, such as from 0 to power 2. Sometimes you have to do more work. This right here will be a better answer. All right? And what we'll do right here is we will plug in the number here, 0 to pi over 2. And we are going to do this in our head. When you plug in pi over 2 into this, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so thank God that will be 0. And then minus, plug in 0 into here. Cosine of 0 is 1, but you have negative 1. But remember, it's minus. You plug in, so it's minus, minus 1. So it's positive 1 over. 1 plus sine of 0 is 0. So finally, we end up with this very, very nice one. We end up with this very, very, very nice one. 100 integrals in one take. I hope this is a world record. But one more thing. Some of you guys might have seen it. Yes, just in case if somebody wanted to break the 100 uh, integral, they thought they know, but they don't. Here is question 101, okay? Integral of sine x over x. This right here is also just as special. My differential equation, linear differential, first order linear differential equation, okay? 
Then I use this as example uh, in that video. First of all, integral of sine x over x. Yes, you know, I haven't put down the dx. I, and also, even though if I do, you cannot finish this, OK? Uh, there ha it has no elementary answer for that. No good. But I'll tell you, if I give you guys the other part, ln x times cosine x dx, like this, well, we will end up with a very, very nice answer. What do you think, think what this is? Sometimes, when you look at an integral, if you look at the big picture, especially when you have the sum, you know, maybe this came from the product rule. Because remember, the derivative of the product is you know, something plus something else. Check this out. Let me tell you, this right here is equal to, hey, L and x and 1 over x, isn't that just like the derivative of L and x is 1 over x, yeah? And the sine x and cosine x come really, yeah? Maybe the first function is sine x. I keep the first function, and I multiply by the derivative second, which is L and x. Check this out. I keep the first function and multiply by the derivative of the second, which is 1 over x, and then I keep the second function, and then I multiply by the derivative of the first function, which is cosine and divide them up. Yes. In fact, this is actually a technique that we have to use when we are doing the first order nonlinear differential, the nonlinear first order differential equation. You have to use the integrating factor to make things happen. One hundred and one integrals. Okay, one hundred and one integrals. I don't know if I make any mistake or not. I probably did, but <sighs> calculus finisher. Okay. Thank you so much for designing this teacher for me. I really appreciate it. And for the people who don't know, he is just one of my viewers. And um, yeah, I know my hands up. Dark. It's like all these markers you see, it's a gun. And then X pulse ones are better. I have to wash my hand now. But anyway, he was just one of my viewers and then he didn't, you know, I actually offered him to pay him, but he didn't accept the money and uh, he just want me to do more videos for you guys to give back to the community and then great person and then I really appreciate your help and really like this design. So cool. Right? So cool. And again, Lars, I, Lars, I, I'm, I'm sorry if I pronounce your name incorrectly, but I really, really hope the best for you. And please let me know, okay? And then for the people down below, uh, for the viewers, please also like, leave some nice comment, uh, you know, to, to, to wish him well, yeah, to wish him well. He's battling with cancers. All right, so I finished the marathon. I will be putting this down <sighs> just like that. Right? This right here, special meaning because I never knew I would be able to run 26.2 miles when I was like 17 years old and I didn't really train for it. And then ever since that, running is just a way that, you know, is Training my willpower is like if I want to do something, it's just like running a marathon. Life is like running a marathon. So yeah. Honestly, I don't know how many views that this video is going to get. Hopefully decent enough. And again, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Okay, right now it's 9.20. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And hopefully you guys can, can continue to support my channel. I really, really appreciate everybody. Uh, who have been uh, leaving nice comments throughout all these years. And I want to thank all my friends, Dr. Payan, Unhan, Fomatika, and a lot more people. And of course, um, my uh, special thanks special thanks to my wonderful, lovely girlfriend, Jia. And I will see you guys soon, and I will see you soon. Okay. Yeah. And as always, that's it!